Good morning and welcome to the 16th meeting in 2018 of the Culture, Tourism, Europe and External Relations Committee. I'd like to remind members and the public to turn off mobile phones and any members using electronic devices to access committee papers should please ensure that they're turned to silent. Today we hold our final evidence session on the committee's inquiry into Scotland's screen sector. Uh, we will first hear from Creative Scotland uh, and then we will hear from the Cabinet Secretary. Over the course of nine evidence sessions, we've heard from over 50 witnesses and have already published our interim report, A Bigger Picture. Following today's session, the committee will publish its final report uh, in the run-up to the summer recess. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to thank everyone, the very many people who have contributed to the committee's inquiry. I'd now like to welcome our first panel of witnesses. Uh, we have Ian Munro, the Deputy Chief Executive of Creative Scotland, Scott Donaldson, the Head of Film Education and the Acting Director for Film, and Barclay Price, who is a board member of Creative Scotland. Uh, I'd like to maybe start by talking about the timescales uh, for the establishment of the screen unit. Uh, it was originally planned uh, for December last year, and then that timescale moved back to April this year. Um, and uh, we're still waiting uh, for the screen unit. So I wonder if you could update the committee and when we're going to see the screen unit. So the uh, business case that was made to ministers to, to get the green light for the screen unit was given at the end of last year and we've moved since then um, to build towards it. Um, I think I said in the last evidence session that it was never going to be possible to be in that time frame 100% fully in place, fully formed and up and running. Um, and so what we're doing is incrementally building the screen unit, rolling it out um, and building momentum. I think we should recognise that we're two months into that um, process uh, of a five-year route map and plan for this the screen unit to transform the industry. Um, I think we recognise that everybody is keen to see and, and feels like they've been waiting for some time to, to see a step change delivered, but I can uh, give assurance that we're absolutely committed to make sure that, that we're moving this as fast and appropriately, appropriately as we can. Um, what was interesting was a, a meeting with the Screen Sector Leadership Group in March of this year, which reinforced the message to us to say, um, take the time to make sure you get this right, because it's so important. Um, we uh, hear what they say, um, uh, respect what they say, but are committed to rolling it out incrementally, as I say, and we've already got the ball rolling on several fronts. Um, to, to build that process. The critical thing they said to us was um, the leadership at the head of the screen unit is fundamentally important um, to be the identify moment, identifiable moment when the screen unit um, launch, as it were, comes into existence. Um, but there are many things that I'm sure we'll get into where, where I can talk more about what we're actually doing to, to build, the, um, build the screen unit now. Right. One of the key things that uh, the industry had, had asked for, even in the last parliament with the um, uh, economy committee's inquiry, was a single front door, a single point of access or, or portal. And that was something that was in the screen sector leadership group as well. Um, and we were told it was being worked on. When are we going to see a portal, a, a single point of access for the industry to access screen support? So that is very much in train. Um, it will be part of that moment when the executive director um, post is announced and there is a form of uh, launch of the screen unit. Um, phase one of that website build, which acts as the single front door, um, um, is in place. And what we're doing at the moment is working on phase two to populate all of that up and, and ensure that there's uh, clarity of the content, but also the, the access through that single front door that will join us as partners up behind. Um, and one of the new developments that we've um, agreed, again coming out of a, a kind of screen committee at the beginning of May, which involves um, external representatives on that committee, is um, to move beyond an MOU between the partners. I know that the committee had interest in the, the MOU previously. Um, 
to better describe the nature, roles, responsibilities of the individual partners, how that collective working will manifest itself and be clear about um, uh, targets for the organisation and the, the different outputs and outcomes that uh, can be expected. And that's something that we will publish. It will go way beyond an MOU and better um, be able to describe how the, how the single front door um, works behind the scenes, and that's what people can hold us to. So there to. isn't going to be a memorandum of understanding between the different organisations that we discussed it the last time that you were here? Um, if I could speak to that as I chair the, the screen committee. We, we looked at this and we felt that the actual uh, fact that for the first time we brought all the agencies together into this one working group was in itself a sort of MOU that in a way we, we've all committed. And the, the key thing was more the business plan so that we could confirm the actions that each of the agencies would be taking, which I think has been a sort of issue in the past, a sort of uh, uncertainty about what each agency was doing. And that, that, that business plan with actions and outcomes would, to an extent, be the MOU. That every party would be signing up to action, whereas an MOU we felt, which we might still develop in due course, might be a rather kind of overarching uh, document that didn't really kind of give us the outcomes that I know we're all looking for. It seems a bit strange that, you know, the, a memorandum of an understanding to make sure that everybody was on board up until now has been an absolutely critical part of your plan for this screen unit. And just to sort of abandon it seems a, it's a not, bit strange. Sorry, we've not, we've not abandoned them, but we felt by putting the business plan together would be a better kind of case of seeing what that MOU might look like. Because at the moment, um, we're still... I think we're much um, further forward to understanding what each party is going to do within this new development. Um, if an MOU is felt essential, then we will put that together. We just felt that the business plan was more um, about action, which we think the screen sector wants to see as the actions that are important to them. Yeah. I think what the Screen Sector Leadership Group uh, identified very clearly was fragmentation uh, in terms of people who are responsible for screen in terms of the public um, uh, rel the public ser sector. Um, and there was concerns about particular Scottish Enterprise role, which I think other members will come on to. And that was why you needed a memorandum of understanding to make sure that everyone was committed uh, because of previous problems with getting Scottish Enterprise T at the table and also in terms of funding? I think the, the thing that has changed is each agency has within its letter of guidance from its minister um, clear guidance which has not been as uh, there in the past. I take the point about Scottish Enterprise, I know there's been uh, concerns in the past, but um, certainly given we now have two screen sector representatives on the screen committee, their, their view was that the business plan was the real way forward because that way we would see what each agency, including Scottish Enterprise, was committing to, and we'd be able to judge that they were delivering on that. It, it, it just seems, you know, I think a lot of people listening to this will, will be a bit concerned because, you know, we've already seen the timescale pushed back, and now, you know, what was the original plan, a memorandum of understanding has been replaced with a, bu a business plan. When are we going to see that business plan? It's under development at the moment. There'll be a, an update through the Screen Committee at the beginning of June. But can I just go back um, briefly, because I think we need to recognise that the, all of the um, public sector partners have committed and are part of that screen unit um, collaborative proposal, which um, is giving birth to the screen unit. So everybody already is um, an integral part of that and, and will be held, as we are as mm -hmm. Creative Scotland, held to account on that. What we're doing is setting out much more clearly, going beyond an MOU, um, and it will contain element, the business plan will contain, contain those elements of, of what an MOU would represent, but the business plan will set out in much more clarity and detail individual responsibilities for each of the, the agencies involved and what we individually and collectively are setting out to deliver. And that will be clearly described and people can hold the, the individual agencies we to account. We discussed the business plan in June. When are we actually going to see the business plan and when... Yeah, when are we going to see the business plan and when are we going to see this portal, the, the single front door? It'll if you could just be a bit more specific about when we're going to see it. So it's going to be published in the summer. Mm -hmm. It's being worked on at the moment um, with the individual uh, agencies involved. Uh, the single front door, as I said, will be 
time to coincide with the uh, executive director being in, in post. Um, until that process is concluded, the exact timing of that we can't be certain of, but we're provisionally working to, um, to uh, the summer period for that. Um, have you started interviewing for this uh, executive director? So I'm pleased to say that there was considerable um, uh, interest in this executive director role. Um, we had inquiries from across Scotland, the UK and internationally, um, over a, a, a hundred um, serious um, conversations and approaches about that. We had 40 applications. Um, the panel met yesterday to shortlist and we've shortlisted six very strong candidates and the interviews will be taking place in June. In June, right, okay. So you expect to have an appointment by, say, the end of June, beginning of July, an announcement? Well, again, depending on who the successful candidate is and yeah. the circumstances of their employment and so on, we will need to um, negotiate all of that. But as soon as we are, are able to, beyond the interview process in June, we will want to make that announcement. Right, okay. Why did you choose to... Um, why did you choose to have an executive director of Screen and Creative Enterprise? I mean, I, thought, I think a lot of people would have thought, you know, like, there's a screen unit, we need somebody to head up the screen unit, and that would be their, their focus. But instead, you've chosen to go down the road of a director of Screen and Creative Enterprise. And I have heard pe some people in the, you know, in the industry itself question, um, question the wisdom of that. If I could say, I mean, I think we felt that one of the big changes of this extra money into Creative Scotland is taking forward Creative Scotland to what, when I joined the board um, eight years ago, was seen as what it would develop into, is a very different structure which would, in a sense, be dealing with both the cultural and the commercial aspects, as it has done, because in other sectors like music, etc., and film that and literature, that's part of its landscape. Um, we felt that this post, which in a sense would bring to us um, high-level commercial um, skills could be well used to help us develop the slightly underdeveloped area of creative industries, which is another part of Creative Scotland's um, um, area. And that where their first focus, um, certainly clear from a board perspective, that their first six months, etc., would be very much focused on screen so that we get the screen unit up and running properly. Um, that their skills could be used to help develop other areas of the creative industries. Because actually, screen and the creative industries, gaming, etc., also emerge more and more in this new current landscape. So we felt that role could help across the board of Creative Scotland and actually bring some ideas about commercial improvement into some of the other art form areas. I think a lot of people would have thought, you know, screen's enough on its own. And if you want to send out a strong message, about the screen unit uh, and uh, and this being a completely uh, new development and a new focus on screen, the, the, you should have had someone who was entirely focused on screen to Thank head up the unit because there's, there's a lack of clarity when you have this other role for them. Could I, could I just, I mean, I think the important thing to reassure the committee and reassure the sector is that the post, the people we looked at in the uh, shortlist, all come from that sector. So that's the skills we're looking for. But we think that they, they can bring that expertise into the wider Creative Scotland area. Okay. I'll now pass on to Claire Baker. Um, thank you, convener. Uh, the panel will be aware that the committee issued an interim report um, earlier this month. We, were, we, we felt it important to, to issue the interim report because there were key concerns that had come up during the course of the inquiry and we felt it was important to give our views on the screen unit at an early stage. Um, in that report, we said it has become clear to us that the proposal for the screen unit will not deliver the step change in support that the screen sector in Scotland needs. We also said the screen unit proposal is a public sector, not a screen sector solution. Um, have Creative Scotland had a chance to look at our comments so far and what is your response to the proposal that we are not convinced that a screen unit sitting within Creative Scotland is the best way forward here and we need to move towards an independent unit? So, yes, we read the, the report and its recommendations uh, with interest. Um, 
And we recognise and respect that the call for a, a separate screen agency is, is not necessarily a new one. Um, it's been there through Creative Scotland's existence. Um, the wider response to that recommendation is obviously a matter for the Scottish Government. Um, what I can t say is that Creative Scotland, the way it's constituted, the way it's um, constructed and the way that we're operating is very much um, that we hold the lead responsibility for screen. We're serious about that, we're committed to that and indeed we're committed to ensure that we deliver against, with our partners and, and the industry, the, the screen unit uh, uh, delivery plan. Um, that's our focus, that's what we've been charged with by the Scottish Government and, and we'll remain committed to, to achieving that. As I said um, before, it is a, it is a five-year plan. Uh, we want to see that step change um, to, and we're uh, putting in place the mechanisms to ensure that we're able to deliver that and that's what people can, can judge us on. As I mentioned, we're two months into that five-year five-year plan and I appreciate that people are impatient but we're very committed to making sure that this happens to, to the best effect. Could, could I add, I mean having worked both inside and outside arts agencies for 40 years, um, there's been lots of moments about um, single agencies or combined agencies and I think as a, as a culture committee one of the things that you might want to consider is, I was a great I was very committed to the creation of Creative Scotland, having worked on the Arts Council. Um, I saw that bringing the two together could give a more strategic um, hold to the whole cultural sector. And other sectors have also in the past expressed interest to have their own agencies. Literature, within the last few years, have been calling for their own agency. Um, a concern I have is that if we move back to a sort of previous model, of different agencies, um, each having to have their own levels of administration. There is a possibility that other sectors, literature, music, which is also a commercial cultural sector, could equally be bringing forward their claims, which could, in a sense, undermine the sort of cultural strategic approach, which I think the government has been moving forward for. And I, sorry, and, and just say, I mean, I believe as a board member that in the um, Creative Scotland has delivered well um, and successfully for the cultural aspect of film, which was what its role was. And I believe that the screen unit within Creative Scotland can deliver well for the new um, need of the commercial factor. The, the evidence is yet. I can see why lots of people on the screen would like their own unit, um, but I believe it has advantage of being a combined strategic approach. But so far, the argument for a strategic approach putting screen within Creative Scotland has seen Scotland in the last 10 years fall behind in terms of UK competitiveness, development of film studios in Manchester, uh, Northern Ireland's moved ahead of us in terms of its production and its investment. So I think it's recognised that Scotland could be doing better than it is. And so far the experience of how screen has been managed um, in the last 10 years doesn't convince us that the model going forward is the right model. And, and one of the key areas within that is governance. So we do have concerns. The, the convener raised the issue of the, um, what's the title that's been given? So the executive director of screen and creative enterprises. And haven't heard the explanation this morning, I do share the concerns that adding creative industries into that portfolio um, could be a mistake. Uh, we've heard clear evidence that we need strong leadership and a focus on screen. And the governance arrangements where the director ultimately reports to the board of Creative Scotland, um, we have concerns that that means uh, that the, the sector won't be fleet of foot enough, it won't be agile enough, it won't be able to make decisions. And I do also have concerns that you have, I'm not sure the process is right, and it seems like the, the staff for this recruitment, this post, has already been recruited. So someone's expected to come in, but they seem to have very little autonomy or decision-making about how the unit will operate and how decisions are made. So I think there's a number of um, <laughs> points there that I can respond to. I want to go back um, first to the, to the original point. Um, about the, the sector's impatience, fr impatience and frustration about um, the work to date. Um, I can understand that frustration, 
but I think it would do a disservice to the very committed um, and expert staff within Creative Scotland as a whole, but specifically here in relation to screen, um, who are absolutely working um, um, hard to make sure that they're delivering for the industry. What they it's not to question the staff. The, the, one of the no, areas no. that Kavina mentioned is around fragmentation. <coughs> so there's always been the tension between Scottish Enterprise and Creative Scotland about who actually takes the lead on this. So I recognise the staff have worked hard, but we feel they're being restricted by the arrangements they have to work. There's a possibility they are being restricted by the arrangements they have to work with them. And I don't think the screen unit solves that problem. So the partnership approach um, is new. And yes, there's scepticism around it. I think we want to prove that it can work. <clears throat> Whatever the future may hold around um, calls for ongoing calls for a, a separate screen agency, that's the model that, that has been set up to address the concerns that have been made. And, and we're can serious I about again, Can I ask just a, for a who decided that model? Because the Cabinet Secretary announced the screen unit, and I understand it was approved by the Cabinet Secretary, but was it Creative Scotland that designed the model, or was it... I'm assuming it's Creative Scotland and the Cabinet Secretary approved it. Was that the... No, it was done through a, col a collaboration um, across the public agencies with the Scottish Government. Um, so it was born out of that collective conversation and, and recognition that there were challenges and issues that continue to be put forward and, and, and the frustrations and concerns that, that everybody wanted to find new and different ways of working that are more effective. But I'm, I'm just recording that you know, there are foundations there to be built from and, and we should recognise that however imperfect people see that model, it's still, to this point, delivered a 200% increase in um, the production spend in Scotland. And we know, recognise and, and believe and want to chase down the potential for much more um, that is part of that transformation set out in the in the screen unit plan. And can I just add? I mean, I, I take your point. There's been frustration about Scottish Enterprises' role in the past, which has been clearly articulated. Um, and I I do see a step change in the conversations we've been having at this uh, screen subcommittee with um, Scottish Enterprises and other agencies. And that issue, in a sense, would be the same whether there's a separate unit or it's within Creative Scotland. Getting the agencies to all deliver properly and effectively together um, is something that will be key to taking the sector forward. So I don't disagree there's been problems in the past, but I, I believe that even with the unit within Creative Scotland, that can still be moved forward. So if I may also come back on the point about governance, and, and there may be um, further conversation about this, but just to, to reinforce the point that <clears throat> um, hear what is said about the, the, the scope of the job description for the executive director. But I want to give assurance again that it is absolutely focused on delivery of the screen unit, the leadership there. Um, and as Barclay said, the, the candidates that are come forward are, are, are from that background. So um, the, the board position was that there's an opportunity to add value um, within that role to the benefit of the wider creative industries, but not to be distracted by it. You know, the role will be singularly focused and charged on delivering the, the screen unit, certainly in the very first instance, but where there are opportunities to build on that in, in the wider creative industries and draw the skills and expertise into those areas for the benefit um, of, of the wider work that we do, then that, that's what the, the role will be uh, uh, brought, brought in to do. We have supplementaries from Richard Lockhead and, and Tavish Scott, if we could be as, as succinct as possible, um, Richard Lockhead. Thanks. It's just to pick up on, I think, the frustration that's been expressed by the committee uh, looking at this issue, in that we feel that the film and screen sector is at a major crossroads at the moment. There are literally billions of pounds being budgeted by companies around the world to spend the film and screen, and we want Scotland to have a bigger slice of that. And it's quite clear from what Claire Baker said that we've not been doing that over the last few years compared to some other countries. Uh, our concern is there's various layers and a lack of direct focus potentially with a screen unit within Creative Scotland as opposed to a standalone agency. Do you understand our concerns when we hear there's not going to be an MOU, for instance, that the executive director is not going to be wholly focused on screen and film, but also going to have some other responsibilities? <laughs> uh, and is there not a case that the focus is going to be diluted for capturing at this important moment in time the great potential for Scotland from film and screen? I really believe that the opportunities will be captured. Um, I mean, I think already um, in the last eight years, there has been terrific work done in film 
Um, some of the barriers, which we all know, lack of a film studio, which there's been other reasons for that. Uh, that's um, difficult in making that happen, but we're confident something is uh, on quite close to fruition. Um, so so I, I don't think I don't think the MOU. I think the important thing is everybody working together through a clear um, plan. Um, and I, I really believe that the, the board and the senior team in Creative Scotland recognise the need to give this new post and its team full backing to take that opportunity forward. I mean, you know, the fact when bringing Outlander into Scotland was done with the Creative Scotland team at the then, with the new resources, staff and the new £10 million, I really believe we can motor that forward. Um, I'm, I, I really don't think the structure is as important as the team of people we have working on it. Can I, sorry, can I, I just add to that um, uh, and hear what is being said? Um, the two things I want to return to, though, are the business of the MOU. I think what we're saying is that we're not dismissing the MOU at all. We recognise its importance. What we want to do is not put in what could be perceived as a superficial MOU um, partnership agreement across the, the public sector bodies, but actually do, do something that's deeper and more meaningful in the form of a business plan that sets out with much more clarity um, more layers of, of the uh, roles, responsibilities and the expectations than a simple MOU would achieve. Um, can, can I just ex maybe express what's at the heart of my concern uh -huh. with this? So if you have a collaboration, a partnership over the future of film and screen in Scotland, and you sit around the table, for instance, and Scottish Enterprise are there, and you have an agreement that something's really essential to move quickly to capture some opportunities arising, Scottish Enterprise and every other agency around that table has to go back to their bosses. Then there has to be a process within those organisations, and then at some point in time they'll come back to this partnership and they'll give a decision. And meanwhile, months go by, the answer may not be the answer you're looking for, and of course the bosses they have to go back and speak to have got other priorities and other issues to deal with. And that situation we can't really see being addressed by, by your plans in terms of speeding things up and giving it extra focus and quick decision making. So, um, but that would be as true if you had a separate screen unit? Well, that would depend how the budgets were organised. Oh, if they had to negotiate with Scottish Enterprise, it would be the same. Well, it depends how the budgets were organised. Okay. Can, sorry. Can I bring in Tavi Scott? I've just got to agree with Richard's line of questioning. But, uh, um, Mr Monroe, can I just take you back to, to, to thank you, Camilla, to the earlier point you, you made at the start about the business plan being presented to ministers. That was presented in the tail end of last year, 2017. And that set out uh, the five, you've talked about the five year um, what, a route map, for want of a better expression. That was, that was very much part of that submission to ministers at that time. Yes, what we published, it was called the Collaborative Proposal. Um, it's a technical document that was submitted to ministers, but we published it on the website. Sure, and so therefore, by definition, the government signed off on both that five-year approach and the fact that the screen unit, as you've described, will be part of Creative Scotland. Yes. That was the strategic approach. Yes. Okay. And, and did they also sign off on... Uh, your letter is very helpful in terms of understanding um, these government's arrangements. They also, presumably, government signed off on a, board, on a screen committee. Um, Mr Price, you've been very open about that, of which seven of the members are public sector... Richard's question, Richard Lockett's question, and, and there are only two industry, rep I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but there are only two industry representatives on that board, on that committee, rather. Yeah, so there are three. Sorry. Um, <laughs> okay. um, three industry representatives on yeah. that board. So Creative Scotland is charged as accountable for the leadership and delivery of the screen unit um, to ministers. Uh, so it's in the lead uh, yeah. Seat, and that's where the board have responsibility. I understand that. D um, but did you feel as any? I mean, is that balance right? Is the question <coughs> between well, between industry people and all the organisations that Richard Lockhead was asking about? So, Berkeley may may want to come in on this as chair of that subcommittee. Um, ultimately, because our board, uh, Creative Scotland, has that accountability to ministers, it's um, constructed with yeah. uh, with that in mind. Um, it is a new model. Uh, we recognise that and we do recognise the point that Richard Lockhead is making about the, the uh, route back into those partner agencies, governance arrangements and so on. Mm. Um, what I've said before is that we will want to keep that under review because actually we want to make sure that the governance arrangements are both effective but also not a hindrance to deliver the 
uh, the five-year plan. So it will be kept under review to understand how, if it needs to shift and, sh and, and reshape into the future, mm -hmm. to ensure that that, uh, that is in place effectively, then, then we'll do that. But you'll be very alive to the point that the committee heard in evidence that, the, that industry said time and time again, we would like to see more people who actually are in the industry on that governing committee. I think, so, sorry, Berkeley, just one, yeah. One, yeah. one final point first. Um, so the, the three industry representatives are there. That's yeah. John McCormack, David Strachan, and Gillian Berry. Um, very senior, very respected um, um, industry representatives. Uh, they met with the screen com as, as the screen committee for the first time um, at the beginning of May, um, and indeed they've given very positive feedback about their confidence moving forward. That, based on the the arrangements at the moment, that is giving them confidence about the future, and that they will continue to play an active role within the governance arrangements as, as currently in mm -hmm. place. If I could add, I, I don't disagree with you. I mean, I think it is a new model. Mm. What, what is missing um, is me being chair, who doesn't have a huge amount of screen uh, experience, but um, we are, the government is recruiting three new members to the board, all of whom will come from the screen and film sector, and their expertise will be added in to that committee. Mm. And so we have had, we've had a kind of period when our uh, screen representation on the board has um, for a number of reasons has been limited. Um, but those new appointments will feed into that. And I think the model of this committee is, is a new model having the public agencies there. It's kind of critical role is to hold each of us to account um, to have a, an area where we were all in the same room having to sign up and agree and try and speed some of that, I think, past sort of delays that have happened. Um, so I think the I hope the screen sector will recognise that these new appointments to the board give more expertise into the whole board and they will also be fed into the screen committee. But if more representation from the sector is required, then we will look to bring them on board. OK, thank you. Thank you. Ross Greer. Thanks, Commander. Throughout our evidence, we heard a number of occasions, particularly from smaller companies in the, the screen sector, that fragmentation meant huge difficulties for them, particularly in access to financial support. It came from a number of different directions. They needed to present themselves in a number of different ways, depending on that. If you're a company of half a dozen people to present yourself in more than half a dozen different ways, it, it becomes a challenge, an issue of capacity and of, of knowledge, of relationship building, etc. Are you at a point yet where you are able to explain to us how the screen unit will simplify that process and reduce that fragmentation to support particularly the smaller companies in the business? Y yes, there, are, there is an absolute recognition of that and a commitment to address it. Um, <coughs> so, excuse me. Um, so there's a very live pilot project at the moment called FOCUS, um, which is a, a, a joint initiative between Scottish uh, Enterprise and ourselves. Um, it's running. I think there's um, 28 companies. We're about to announce 28 were last year. 20 uh, are about to be announced uh, of the kind that you're describing, um, where we've invested in um, the ability for them to access the business development support that they are looking for through one single front door and one model. Um, as I say, it's very much a pilot. Um, it's half a million pounds. And uh, we will be evaluating that to understand how we may be able to scale that up, assuming that it, that it works effectively, in order to be, you know, absolutely one of those kind of singular uh, opportunities to address the point that's being made. What's the, sorry, sorry. Uh, Barker, I'm just going to ask, on, just yeah. on a technical point, what's the, the time scale for the pilot completing and, and being evaluated? Uh, I don't know that information. I'm sorry, I can find out and, and certainly get back to you. That'd yep. be useful, thanks. Yep. I was just going to add, I mean, the fragmentation point is interesting because a, a different kind of fragmentation could happen if uh, there's a separate screen unit. In the past, I recall when I worked at the Arts Council and Scottish Screen World, we had a number of issues to do with um, arts venues, arts centres such as Eden Court, um, Dundee, um, who had cinemas as a kind of major part. And there was, there was some issues about which agency was responsible for those art centres. So uh, fragmentation could, can happen in other ways. And one of the original, the, the reason for setting up Creative Scotland, and I think it's been very successful from that point of view, was to ensure a one, a one stop for the whole cultural sector, including, for example, visual artists who work in screen, which again used to cause some problems in the past, 
where they weren't sure whether they were to go to Scottish Green or they'll go to the Arts Council. Um, so fragmentation can happen in other ways when there's different agencies, as already we've seen with the, the agencies who have all had a responsibility for Screen. I absolutely accept that that's a risk. The, the issue is that we have now collected a considerable amount of evidence of the fragmentation that has uh, happened in reality as a result of, of the current setup and, and dissatisfaction with that and the relationship with those yeah. agencies. Just to turn briefly to um, issues of inward investment, um, I, I realise that you are not yet in a position where you're able to completely lay out the um, screen units um, plan of, of operation. And um, that's obviously a challenge for us to, to complete this process. If we're looking at an issue like inward investment, if I were uh, looking to set up a production in Georgia in the US, their state agencies would be falling over themselves to offer uh, location scouting uh, support, to offer connections with uh, local production, post-production companies, etc. Is there a plan in place? Is, is there something that we would be able to scrutinise about the screen unit's intentions to support inward investment? Uh, yes, I mean, there'll be more laid out um, in detail through the, the, the work to come, single front door website, um, business plan and so on. But I'd want to record currently what goes on, and it absolutely is proactive in the, in the regard that you're referring. So our screen commission active internationally. Most recently we had 20 top US executives across. We took them on a, a kind of, it's called a FAM trip, um, involves um, going right across the, the geography of um, um, Scotland, uh, showing our locations uh, as, a, as attractive. Um, we have uh, been in Cannes most recently, uh, actively promoting Scotland through our screen uh, commission work. Um, so that you know, Scott may have more to to, to add. So there's, um, we've got production growth fund in place as well. Um, that's that's live. That's built up over recent years. And in the last three years, there's been 3.7 million pounds invested through production growth fund, which is about inward investment, based on the calculations so far, on the productions that have been supported there. The multiplier effect of that means £3.7 million pounds public sector investment is going to generate £60 million pounds worth of um, inward investment into Scotland through those, those um, I think it's about 13 productions that have been funded to date. We've got that, that is one of the new, uh, the new enhanced strands of funding that we've put in place at the, at the beginning of the screen unit's uh, life. So we're continuing to build on what is already in place and we'll do more of that. <coughs> Uh, I just want to record uh, my esteem for the screen, my colleagues in the Screen Commission uh, team who do all of the things that you're asking about um, and uh, are extremely proactive um, in markets around the world, in Toronto, Berlin, Cannes, and as Ian said, uh, hosted uh, the six um, uh, top screen executives here um, and uh, uh, organised... Um, a, a dinner which was uh, hosted by uh, the Cabinet Secretary to show the political will uh, that is behind uh, our development of screen business. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Stuart McMillan. Uh, thank you, Kingbian. Good morning, panel. Um, can I just on that, uh, uh, the, the last point, sir, when you, you mentioned about uh, CAN, the 20 U US execs coming over, the £3.7 million production growth fund, um, how much support will there actually be for domestic talent uh, to encourage uh, them to invest in them so that, uh, so that our sector can actually become more robust and in the future it's not going to be reliant upon that huge inward investment? Yeah, absolutely, and um, it's, a, it's another aspect of um, what we offer and are keen to see develop and, and support. There's a £4 million pounds film content and development fund, which is absolutely um, about supporting indigenous talent. Um, I think we should also recognise that production growth fund inward investment also helps to strengthen opportunities for um, indigenous, in the indigenous industry here um, uh, as well. So, you know, there, there are um, elements in place and absolutely take the point that we want to ensure that we are focused on, on the indigenous sector as much as as much as anything. I don't know if anyone else wants to comment. 
Yeah. <clears throat> so as Ian says, there's a film development and production fund of four million. Um, there will be uh, forthcoming a television uh, focused fund, content development and production fund of three million. Um, besides those uh, development and production funds, we're looking. You know, we have uh, and will be expanding our development of skills and talent. Um, there are a range of supports that we have for indigenous. Uh, growth, and uh, you know your your question is 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 well made. The the what what we need to do over the next five years is uh, build sustainable businesses and sustainable production uh, over the next five years, and the majority of our funds are aimed at that. Does that mean that, uh, that you will uh, need to take maybe a chance uh, on uh, on some? Uh, new people coming through the sector uh, as compared to being potentially risk averse uh, as it has been the, kind of one of the allegations in the past? It's our role to, um, to build talent at every level and that does mean taking risks, absolutely. We do that and we have done that uh, and we'll continue to do that. I mean, the, board, the board has a risk register and one of the areas that we've discussed uh, quite deeply was how much uh, risk did we wish to take in the cultural field in decisions. And I think one can sometimes see from the press coverage on some of the decisions Creative Scotland makes that we are far from risk averse when it comes to supporting creative talent. That's the role of Creative Scotland, is to take risk on new talent, on new artistic ideas. So we're completely committed to that. I want to ask you a wee question just regarding the, the studio. Uh, you mentioned uh, also about taking the, the US execs uh, around uh, and uh, notwithstanding the, the Pentland uh, studio uh, situation. Um, uh, in terms of the, the studio capacity that we have, there the clearly seems to be um, kind of more demand uh, to have uh, something else. Uh, are you looking at any other locations to, to try to promote to get some further uh, investment uh, into the into studio capacity. Yeah, I mean the the studio absolutely for everybody is a is a top priority. It's laid out as one of the key ingredients to enable a step change for the industry. And um, so currently, uh, through our screen commission principally, um, we promote the studio facilities that are available, um, that are are in place. So Ward Park, Pentland, and so on and so forth. Um, we have been doing some um, considerable work to deliver against the aspiration and the objective set out within the screen unit plan for um, an identifiable studio for Scotland. Um, what's clear, especially reinforced through uh, recent conversations with Pentland, is that the, the scope for Scotland to attract and sustain business within uh, the industry here Th those opportunities are substantial and we want to chase that. It means that several studio opportunities in Scotland can be in place in order to enable that to happen. What we're, what we're doing at the moment is, and, and uh, we're very close to this, we're quite advanced in terms of uh, a business case uh, that we'll be putting to ministers for, um, for uh, a studio proposition. This is in addition to Ward Park and Pentland and indeed um, uh, 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 pyramids and so on. Um, I can't say any more about it because clearly there are kind of business sensitivities and commercial um, considerations there, but we are very close to, to making that case to get agreement to, to move forward. One of the key challenges uh, that we know has been raised and we recognise because we've had to um, uh, work our way through it is around state aid. Um, and we recognise and we've researched what other countries have done which have been held up as, as, as models. Um, so what we've been doing is taking very, very um, close work together as, as the screen partners, principally with, with Scottish Enterprise. Um, but also with specialist advice from the Scottish Government State Aid Unit. And indeed, we've taken expert specialist uh, legal advice from, um, from Brussels. So we're doing our best to work that through to find a model in a business case that actually enables that issue to be addressed. Uh, and as I said, we're quite advanced in that process and we'll be 
uh, hopefully shortly putting that, that business case into ministers and we'll, we'll have further to say in due course. If I could just say, I mean, I completely accept the frustration about the, the film studio situation. And I think one of the one of the difficulties for the board of Creative Scotland has been a huge amount of work has been going on, state aid has been one of the big issues, which one's not a, always been able to, in a sense, talk about and you know put out there. Um, but I, I am confident that this proposal we've got is going to see something happen very soon. I, I would assume that um, with Pentland also being in the East Coast, Ward Park in Central Scotland, then this other um, potential it would be somewhere over in the, in the West Coast. Inverclyde would be a great, a great location for that. Mm. Uh, mm. as well. Uh, Ross Greer has a question, on, a supplementary question on the yeah, infrastructure. Thanks, convener. Just very briefly, and Ian, in, in what you revealed, hinted at there, you've kind of partly answered this, but. Um, Concern that I've come across a number of times from folk in the industry is uh, there's a fear that this uh, plan, that this attempt to grow the screen sector in Scotland is too dependent on a studio in existence at Pentland, which might not ever or, or might not for some time come about, given there's still there's a tenant farmer on that site who's not willing to move. There's almost certainly going to be protracted legal action there. Do you understand the concern from a number of folk in the industry that too much is being placed on the potential of the site at Pentland? Uh, so, uh, yes, I've heard the, 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 uh, the points that have been made too. I think, um, so our, our recent meeting with Pentland, and there's, there's further follow-up that we'll, we'll be doing, um, gave us assurance that actually there's a serious proposition there, notwithstanding there, are, there, there is a, a legal matter that they're dealing with, but on the basis that that can be resolved, um, they're confident that they've got the investors lined up to enable the first phase of that uh, to proceed. We accept that uh, and applaud that at face value, and we'll continue to work with them to um, to see how we can best support that uh, in, in due course. Um, and that's not just because they're not looking for capital investment, which is where the state aid issue principally comes in, but um, of course all the other tools at our disposal around in, in incentives and so on uh, is something that we can engage them with. Um, but through that conversation, um, it was clear and they, they supported the fact that um, Scotland can sustain more. Um, so what our business modelling has been looking at is, is beyond Pentland um, to the creation of, of another studio. Um, they wouldn't be in direct competition, the offer would be slightly different and it would enable us to ensure that we're getting coverage across the market when you take into account other uh, studios like Pentland, uh, sorry, uh, Ward Park, Pyramids and other kind of build and, and pop-up space, uh, as I said, which we're, we're actively promoting at the, uh, uh, currently anyway. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Alexander Stewart. Thank you, convener. Witnesses already gave us indications that there was real concern about the lack of access and content, especially that in sort of rural areas, uh, and that was with exhibition and cinema. Uh, so what is the role of the unit and how will that screen unit itself help to ensure that we have more access? So it's an absolutely central part of the yeah. whole pipeline um, of, the, of the offer currently, as well as with the screen unit, I would want to um, recognise that as part of the equation here, what we do um, through our regular funding is support a, a number of organisations on a regular basis to be part of that cinema infrastructure um, where there is kind of public engagement and exhibition um, opportunities, and that's right across the geography of Scotland. And it's from uh, Maria in Shetland, um, Eden Court in Inverness, to um, uh, uh, Glasgow Film and uh, the, the Film House in Edinburgh, for example, DCA and the others. Um, but there are other aspects to this where we have um, other funds available which are about um, supporting that wider network. And uh, Scott may want to say more about Film Hub um, Scotland as well. So the um, uh, increased funding uh, available to us through the screen unit has enabled us to increase our support for Film Hub Scotland, which is a partnership with the British Film Institute um, and is responsible for audience development across Scotland. Um, they have around, I think, 120 uh, member organisations and they are literally uh, around Scotland. Um, 
We're also doing other things like in, uh, researching the potential for community cinema um, and uh, other activities which will uh, uh, increase access, could increase access to cinema in Scotland. And when you're looking at increasing that access, what are you thinking about with the skills uh, process? Because in some of these remote areas, the individuals and organisations may not have the skill set. It's ensuring that they have that skill set that they can actually uh, expand and develop. Uh, and without that skill set, it's very difficult sometimes for them to capture that process and go into that market. So how are you tackling that? Sure. Well, um, the uh, skills and talent uh, strategy will need to address that and will address that. Um, the research I mentioned um, is... Uh, partly aimed at looking at community cinema and the skills and infrastructure that those would need uh, in order to develop and, imp uh, and establish their services more firmly. And, and, and the funding package that's required to make that dream become a reality? <coughs> well, we have uh, an additional half a million for mm. the skills and talent strategy, and I see no reason why w we can't use some of that for supporting that skills development in, in those sectors. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. There's a supplementary from Tavish Scott. Um, just an uh, Alexander Stewart's question there. So we're asking you on one hand to do all of what you've just described, and on the other hand we're asking you to make Scotland the centre of the universe when it comes to attracting film. I'm just, the, the, that is a huge range of responsibilities for a small team of people. Can you do it all? I'd say we attempt to do it across the other art forms and I think we have, in uh, partnership with the art forms, and ensured that to happen. I mean, visual arts is an example. I mean, yeah. visual arts is now, you know, internationally renowned. Um, I guess, Mr. Scotland Price, I'm just asking, are we asking you to do too much here and not focus on what's the most... I don't know. I don't know the answer to this, but is, is the, I mean, what is the most economically important thing for us to be asking you to do? So I, I, I feel confident that we can deliver what's set out in that... The blueprint. Sure, sure. Um, is it overstretching us? Mm. Time will tell. But we're setting up the unit to have the necessary ingredients to enable that that uh, to be delivered. Um, we can be judged on progress yeah, in due course. Yeah. Um, but I, what we recognise is absolutely necessary is is the full breadth of spectrum, which is everything from um, indigenous production strength audiences, skills and talent development, mm. inward investment opportunities, the studio and so on. Um, we've got the different um, tools lining up now to enable all of that to move forward and, um, and we are committed to making that happen to best effect, but ultimately we will, we will see. We're scaling up on human resource as well as financial resource, remember, and mm. the skills and expertise to enable us to, um, to achieve that. Um, and, on that point, I also wanted to connect it back to um, Claire Baker's uh, point earlier about the executive director um, coming in at a point where things may be locked down. Um, so we are scaling up. We've, we've concluded the recruitment on four new specialist uh, officers, three screen officers and one screen, screen commission officer, and, and we're contracting on that um, at the moment. Um, but the way that we're doing that is to put in place those arrangements to... Um, ensure that the executive director coming in can reshape that as necessary to best suit the uh, executive director's own vision about how best to organise the team and the support structures to enable that to happen. Could I add, I mean, I think the board recognises that this is taking in quite an extra <coughs> chunk, chunk of delivery mm. um, and there's been a lot of discussion about that and when the proposal came from Minister, that was one of our internal discussions. Um, I, I kind of, I understand why the film sector has been frustrated in the past, um, and I think that we we believe we have in place the the structure which will deliver what they wish. What what concerns me is that, in a sense, at this point, when we've in a sense got this all sort of ready. To, already in place but more ready to go, in a sense disrupting that with sudden change, major structural change, which in a sense I think would set things back quite dramatically. Um, I think Creative Scotland will and should be judged on whether it delivers. Um, and it seems to me that if after three, four, five years, 
Um, this committee and the film sector believe that Creative Scotland hasn't delivered that ambition, then that would be the time to perhaps consider a different arrangement. But I think a different arrangement this time would actually be quite disruptive. Just what you've said then, Mr Price, um, we don't have three or to five years to wait and see what happens. I mean, our, our interim report, based on the evidence we received, is that Scotland uh, has an incredible opportunity at this point in time to uh, benefit from the amount of content that's been commissioned across the world. We're already behind, and if we don't get it right now, we'll miss the boat. So can you understand that you say, well, we'll wait five years, and if it doesn't, if it's not worked, it's not worked. That will send real chills through the sector. People will be very concerned to well, hear you say that, particularly because well I've just learned today that you're actually chairing this screen committee, which I didn't know up until now. I, well, the, the, what I've heard from quite senior members in the, in the screen and film sector is that they also feel it should be given its time. They believe that now the things are in place. You may, they may report something different to you, but it'll be interesting to see what the final uh, input from them is. But I've heard a feeling that they would like to give this time. They believe the things are in place um, to drive it forward. Of course, if, if I believe, because you know, I'm committed to, I've been committed all my life to ensuring culture thrives, if I thought that this plan wouldn't work and deliver what is the ambition, then in a sense I would be in agreement with you. But I do believe that it can, within Creative Scotland, deliver the ambition that the film sector wishes. Jamie Green. Thank you, Convener. Good uh, morning, panel. Can I just ask a point of clarification? When the committee produced its report saying that uh, there should be a, st a standalone agency, was it government that came to Creative Scotland and said, no, that's not how we want to do things? Or was it Creative Scotland that pushed back to government and said, we want to keep this in-house? So the origins of the screen unit are based in an SNP manifesto commitment. Okay, that answers the question. Uh, can I move on to your letter, if that's okay? Um, and th there was an interesting uh, uh, sentence in it that says, we have seen an in increase in interest from international companies wanting to come to Scotland to understand how industry incentives in Scotland compare to other countries. Um, can I ask, uh, apart from the usual incentives, such as our wonderful landscape, scenery, great people, uh, and expertise, etc., what are the, some, of, some of the key uh, comparisons between Scotland and some of our neighbouring regions or indeed neighbouring countries in terms of policy incentives, not just uh, physical uh, incentives. So what are some of those key differences that you would pitch to a, a US exec of a, of a large network? Do you want to take that one, Scott? I'm not quite sure what you mean in terms of policy incentives I mentioned before. Or financial, for example. Well, financial, the production growth fund, which has been uh, discussed before. Um, we provide funds to um, uh, uh, recce funds so that people who are interested in filming here um, can be shown the landscape you talk of, uh, facilities for filming, uh, etc., etc., uh, meeting crew, um, <coughs> and uh, th those kinds of activities. Um, and, and these international, key international opportunities can, we've mentioned, Toronto, Berlin, so on, um, where we are there representing Scotland. We take um, producers with, with us as part of that process. We host events. Um, we proactively engage in those opportunities. Um, but we also um, recognise that, that the business works a lot in terms of um, direct engagement. So we're, we're active in pursuit of cultivating positive relationships. We mentioned the, the six top US executives recently. That's part of that process. And the new executive director coming in will have a lead role as part of that to ensure that um, that international working um, um, uh, uh, is effective on top of the work that we already do through, through the Screen Commission and so on. Okay, so uh, so for example, I, so I, I come to you uh, with a, a, a production, a, a big budget production for an online platform, and I've got the choice between Scotland, say Northern Ireland, and the Republic of Ireland. Perhaps the scenery is similar, perhaps the expertise and facilities are similar, but when it comes to 
uh, real incentives uh, uh, in terms of top-down incentives. How do you think Scotland compares uh, uh, in that, that scale? Do you think we've got enough um, top-down policy there at government level uh, to actually ensure that we capture that business compared to some of our competitors? Well, the enhanced funds is absolutely a key ingredient in, in, in those incentives. The, the tax credits environment as well is part of that equation, and of course that's beyond Creative Scotland's um, um, direct responsibility. But all of that together, plus the talent and skills of crew that we've got here and so on, um, is what we do to, um, to promote Scotland and, and draw that inward investment. <coughs> Uh, you say that tax credits uh, is something that's outside of your remit. Naturally, that's a, a decision made by, by political people. I, I do get that. But surely the, the point of this agency that is there to represent Scottish Screen is not to represent and not to be told simply what it should be doing by government based on government's policy, but actually to be lobbying government and saying, we need more incentives, we need more tax credits. This is how other countries are doing it. And that's how it works in other parts of the world where the industry-led bodies are lobbying government, not just simply being directed by a government agency, which in effect is what we are here today. So how do you think that's going to work in practice and, and how effectively will you lobby politicians to get those changes that you think Scotland needs? I wouldn't want anybody to misunderstand that that doesn't happen. Um, Creative Scotland, non-departmental public body, arm's length, we're not directed by government. We operate under um, uh, the... Uh, framework with the Scottish Government and the policy priorities that are set out in an annual letter to us um, from ministers. Um, but we have the autonomy to, to direct our own resources and, and uh, deliver the things that, that we're expected to deliver um, as now part of that screen unit proposal with uh, the partnership with the, the other agencies. Um, so. The other aspect of what you said is that, um, of course, we have conversations. They're not always public and visible, but of course we have conversations, um, not just in, in uh, at a Scotland level, but in a UK level, about these wider matters, about um, tax credits, incentives, and so on and so forth. And um, just because that's not visible in a public sense, um, I wouldn't want anybody to, to not know and understand that that actually does happen. Perhaps just one final, it's around uh, the context of the, the new unit. Could you give me an idea of roughly how many people are dedicated solely to the screen unit at the moment and where that's heading? Is it going up or down? Uh, it's going up. Um, it's doubling. Uh, we're currently at 12. Uh, there's recruitment for five already underway. Um, I, I've mentioned most of them. Um, the current plan is to uh, add another 15. Um, and going back to, back to the very, that, so that, that's largely specialists, just to be absolutely clear. The model basing the screen unit um, and that team within Creative Scotland means that there's added value um, and a cost efficiency through economies of scale because that team then has access to specialist support in other operational areas around finance, HR, um, funding and so on. And all of that would need to be additional whether to be a separate screen agency with all the attendant additional costs as a result. So the core specialist team is 12. It's moving up by 15 in, in the current plan, but it will be finalised once the executive director is in, in place. Thank you. I'm going to bring Claire Baker back in. Uh, thank you, convener. Um, as a, partly a follow-on from Jamie Green's questions around industry involvement, um, the, so the Scottish Sector Leadership Group has been the key... Um, they, there's only meant to be a short-term body, that group. But it's still in existence and looks like it's the key industry involvement that you have. Um, notwithstanding, there's going to be three members on the committee and I understand there's meant to be additional screen expertise coming on to Create Scotland Board, but I think that's one or two... How will you see um, industry engagement going forward? And how will you be able to... Because I think it is important that the industry has can have confidence in the screen unit and that the screen unit can be flexible and responsive enough to the needs of the industry. How will you manage that relationship going forward and how will you involve them in uh, the direction of the industry? And I, I, we recognise the call for greater involvement and, and we would wish to find the mechanisms in, in a variety of ways to, to achieve that. Just to be clear, and, and I'll expand on that in a second, just to be clear, there's at least two new screen 
uh, board members being recruited. Um, it could be three. Um, so we'll be strengthening in, in that part of the governance structure. But in terms of direct industry involvement, yes, the SSLG um, was uh, uh, formed out of the, the committee's recommendations previously. It's a, a very good group under the chair of John, John McCormick. And John, as I mentioned earlier, is one of the external representatives, bringing that body of representation into the screen committee as one of the three industry representatives there. I understand, um, I think there's a, a screen... Uh, sorry, an SSLG meeting coming up, I think it's next week. Um, and I'm sure they will be reflecting on the committee's um, interim report uh, and recommendations too. Um, but that group will also, I'm sure, be talking about how it, how it moves forward in terms of its representation. Um, but the other thing, the other aspect of that, that's all about kind of governance structures in the formal sense. The other thing I would want to um, illustrate, I suppose, is that we connect on a daily basis, but also where there are key developments and opportunities, we're committed to ensuring that we've got industry and voices directly involved in that, in that process of consultation of a new policy or a new fund. And most recently, the content fund, which is under development, is one of the other key planks of the new investment that we've got. It'll be three million pounds. Um, that's involved uh, industry representatives, 10 industry representatives, in the development and formulation of what that content, f content fund will be. We're in the final, that too has a state aid implication, that fund. So we're in the final stages of that, that process and we're about to play it back out to the industry uh, representatives to get their um, agreement to the, the content fund proposal before we go live and we anticipate that that will happen in June. And just to add another example, um, the skills and talent strategy which I mentioned uh, earlier um, that will be uh, consulted with uh, a, an industry reference group um, in order to make sure that it's fit for purpose uh, in skills and talent development. And the convener also raised some concerns about the five-year plan and the time scales involved. Um, during that time, how will you monitor success? We're not going to have to wait five years to find out whether it's success or not. So during the five years, how will you judge and also, I mean, there's an expectation in the next five years that the money coming into Scotland through Screen will increase. Um, it's increasing everywhere, as uh, Richard Lockhead pointed out, streaming services, the increase there is in production. So we could expect there to be an increase, but how will that be uh, judged to be a, a meaningful increase that actually gets us to the level we should be competing at? Because we'll see an increase in Northern Ireland, we'll see an increase in uh, Pinewood, we'll see, you know. So how do we make sure Scotland is actually making the progress that we want to see? I think it will come in different forms, and some some will be through the practice of the work of the screen unit, how they, these new enhanced um, funds flow, what we're supporting, and so on and so forth. But actually the hard evidence will come through the, the annual reporting against the business plan that we've talked about um, earlier, where there will be very clear outputs and uh, objectives set, and the, the, they will be... Uh, reported on, on an annual basis because we need to keep unlocking the £10 million each year um, um, to keep delivering against that five-year plan. So, you know, it will be tracked in that way. But also, the, the, the five-year plan itself has some, some high-level targets and objectives set out in it. So, you know, ultimately, that five-year plan in time, as we build towards it, will be, um, we'll be able to see absolutely what uh, progress has been made. And I would hope and fully intend that we we exceed that but we've got to have a kind of minimum that we're we're aiming for and yes there will be growth everywhere but we recognize that actually internationally there is huge scope for exponential growth within scotland by getting all of these ingredients right in, in order to ena enable it to happen could i add i mean one of the early discussions in this was with some screen industry people on what those targets should be and the targets set are ambitious, um, I think achievable, but they're certainly ambitious. But no, it, I'm not saying we will wait until five years to see if we're in success. Each year we have to be looking to see whether we're delivering on those first year. One of the issues of film screen is you sometimes don't see the outcomes for two or three years down the track, given the length of time of productions. But it'll be important to monitor um, from day one that, in a sense, a difference is starting to be made.
but the targets are ambitious and those are what uh, will be judged against. And those were evolved in conversation with screen experts of what they thought the potential was and what they felt Scotland's uh, ambition should be. Supplementary from Stuart McMillan. Uh, thank you, Convener. It's uh, just it's towards uh, Mr. Price. Uh, Mr. Price, earlier, uh, sorry, about 50 minutes ago, uh, you said that, uh, that the structure is in place. And one of your earlier comments this morning was that uh, the structure is not important. And then at 9.33, this, uh, you said that uh, if more representation is required, then we will look at that. That provides me with a confusing picture in terms of, uh, in terms of you know, where we're going to go and also in terms of what the, what the structure actually is in terms of, uh, with this new unit. Can you provide some clarity, please? I'm sorry, the, the structure, I, I think I was talking about the structure of the committee and then the structure of the organisation. Hmm. Well, well that, that's, that's actually kind of highlights the point, just in terms of, uh, in terms of well, the lack of clarity. The structure is that we have the subcommittee, which we've discussed, mm -hmm. the staffing, um, we're building on an existing screen unit within Creative Scotland and expanding that structure. Um, so it's an evolving process. So I'm sorry mm. if I confused. Ian clarified it. Um, we've, we've put in place some of the staffing, but as we've said, we wanted to hold off some of the further staffing until the screen uh, post was fulfilled. Um, so in a sense, it's slightly evolving in a structural process, but... Um, that, that seems to me the appropriate way forward. Um, and as Ian said, because um, the screen, um, the input from the screen sector was not to put everything absolutely in place yet, but to hold off some of it until the new post was in place. So I'm sorry if I confused you. Okay, thank you. Could I come in just very quickly on sort of updates on some of the other um, uh, areas that we've taken evidence on? Um, Data is obviously there's a, a, a clear uh, lack of data in terms of what the industry needs, and there was uh, plans to develop a new data hub as part of the screen unit. Could you give us an update on that, and could you also give it an update on the plans in the collaborative document to uh, forge a partnership with the BBC, and I think there's talk of other partnerships as well. So, could you give us an update on where we are with those two things? I'm going to hand over to Scott for that. Yeah. Yeah. So, on the data, um, as has been rehearsed many times in this committee, um, it, the data is difficult. It's very difficult to obtain uh, that full data picture which we which we would all like. Um, the data doesn't line up. Um, and we heard from Oldsberg and uh, BFI and others uh, on the difficulties there. As it points out in the collaborative proposal, there's a quarter of a million a year allocated towards uh, data and research. And uh, I think it's one of the most uh, exciting aspects, actually, of the, of the whole um, proposal because that gives us the resource and the opportunity to nail some of these data questions um, albeit there will remain uh, all kinds of difficulties so the knowledge and research team has been working with the BFI to understand uh, the um, the nature of the the data that the BFI uh, purchases um, I think there are if memory serves nine different sources of data that the BFI purchases. So uh, the Knowledge and Research Team in Creative Scotland is working with the BFI to understand what specifically about Scotland can be uh, obtained from that data, and the BFI is doing the work on that. Um, the Knowledge and Research Team is also working with um, uh, uh, to scope out with partners what other sources of data uh, can be made available and we have the resource to do that but it's not just about the numbers there is uh, there's a, a strong need for qualitative research as well uh, and gathering in the intelligence uh, that we need um, and also to um, to understand better the impact of interventions to date and interventions in future and I think the role of the data and research uh, uh, 
aspect of the screen unit will help us immensely to uh, track uh, what's happening uh, and what the impact is of our work. Okay. And in terms of the partnerships with the BBC? And yeah, others? in terms of the partnerships, um, we are talking to a number of potential partners. We had a, a, a large meeting yesterday um, with senior executives at the BBC, um, and we will be following these up with uh, STV, uh, Channel 4 and others. So do we have any dates when we expect announcements on those partnerships to happen? I can't uh, give yeah. you a date just now. Yeah. And going back to your comments on the data hub, obviously you know you've got you've got people who are currently doing that but is there going to be a new development in terms of data there's uh, one new member of staff is proposed for that team right. in order to enhance its capability and capacity right. okay so basically the data gathering is being done by the team that you already had in place previously be before the screen unit Yes, yeah, you've gathering some data, but you have to remember that they work across the whole of Creative Scotland and there's a right. huge amount of pressure on them to provide data across Creative so Scotland's we're not, activities. So we're not going to have a new data hub then within the screen unit? Because you're, you're talking about these, these people are part of Creative Scotland's research team. They're just doing what they've always done. So there, no. will, be, there will be a data hub. I mean, there's, there's enhanced um, human resources as part of the... Uh, the plan, but it's also about the model across the partnership, but particularly our, our kind of key screen partners, including the BFI. Um, you know, the the uh, the notion of a data hub is what we're trying to understand what that actually means in order to be able to describe it. And what the team are doing at the moment is scoping out what that may look like, and in due course we'll be able to yeah. be able it, to describe it. It's just it. that you know, given that everyone has identified data been been a problem. Um, what you seem to be saying is that the people who have been responsible for it up until now are continuing to be responsible for it. So where's where's the change? I mean, if we're we're talking about a step change because of this big lack of, of data, um, you seem to be saying that nothing's really changing. It's the same people who were doing it before in the, in the system that wasn't delivering who are continuing to do it. So again, I, I want to make sure that doesn't do a disservice to our colleagues and knowledge. No, it's, it's not so, a personal comment. Um, it's no. just it doesn't seem to be any it, change. It, well, there will be. Um, but what is at the heart of it, as I'm sure you heard from the evidence session last week, is the the consistency and reliability of current methodology. Um, now, what we've done to date is to continue with the methodology that was in place from Scottish Screen to ensure that we can track on a consistent basis. There's a slight inconsistency there, as you heard um, from the evidence session last week. We need, uh, c compared to the UK um, BFI, BFI methodology, so we need to iron all of that out to understand how we can get to a much better place. And some of that's about the structures, some of that's about the methodology, and some of that's about the uh, the human resourcing um, around it. So that's what is being scoped out at the moment. The uh, the plan for this is is in train. We're we're um, working to to better put in place a much clearer plan about what form the data hub will, will take in due course. What we're doing at the moment is scoping all of that out to to be sure about what the issues are and how we're going to address them. Okay. And it's important to stress that, uh, and go back to the funds which the um, data and research uh, aspect of the screen unit will have. Most data is bought um, and it will enable us to buy the, 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 the quantity and quality of data that we need. Okay, thank you. Um, if I could just finish up um, with a question to, to Mr Price, because you've revealed today that you're chair of the, the screen committee, when, uh, you referred to it I think as a subcommittee. Um, wh when you were asked earlier about our interim report and the recommendation in terms of uh, a standalone screen unit. Um, you made a couple of points. One was that other other sectors of culture also asked for their own uh, agencies. And you mentioned literature in particular. And you also talked about fragmentation um, as, a sort of, as a general problem. Our interim report was very much focused on the fact that screen and We've had huge amounts of evidence on this, is that screen is different 
from every other sector. It's different from literature, it's different from visual arts because it spans both culture and business. And it also has the opportunity to create many jobs. I think many people listening to you today by sort of comparing it to literature and by suggesting that you know fragmentation happens everywhere when the Screen Sector Leadership Group and every other witness focused on the, has agreed that fragmentation has been a real problem in delivering for screen. I think people will be concerned to hear you say that. Uh, you, perhaps you don't recognise what everyone's been telling us, that screen is unique in terms of you know, the, the sector, unique in its uh, potential to deliver as well. I, I believe each art form is quite is unique. I mean, in my experience, um, I once I once worked for the Crafts Council. Um, the Crafts Council um, it was decided it should be amalgamated into the Arts Council. There was a great uproar from the crafts community that somehow that would lose their special approach. Um, it, at that time, it didn't happen, but eventually it did. Um, I. Th each, each art form is quite in, is unique, and I think if you heard from each of art form sector, you'd hear a similar thing. Music spans commercial and cultural, and is a huge industry, Erna. So of course film is special, but I think each other art form is special. And each art form needs its own specific approach to deliver it for the best. And that's what I've tried to do both in my work and as a board member of Cato Scotland, to ensure that the policies you put in place have a specificity to the art form, but also a strategic overview. Um, so film is different, but I think music is different, and each needs to be developed in its own way. My only point of making a concern was it would be a shame, I think, for Scotland, which is a small country, if we started to get a fragmentation of agencies all looking at culture. I think it would make that strategic overview very hard to deliver for the government. Every other country in the world has a screen agency. If you look at other countries, they have other different agencies for different other art forms. Many other countries have specific literature forums. It's, it's a model Scotland's trying to deliver and develop, and I think it has the opportunity to take things forward. Other people may disagree. Yeah, I think. Quite a few other people disagree, but I think um, we're due to see the Cabinet Secretary next, and I'd like to thank you all for coming today uh, to give your evidence, and we'll have a short suspension uh, for a change of witnesses. Thank you very much.
Uh, continuing our evidence this morning, I'd now like to welcome the Cabinet Secretary for Culture, Tourism and External Affairs, Fiona Hislop, MSP, and her officials from the Scottish Government, Dr Jonathan Price, Director of Culture, Tourism and Major Events, and Jane Holligan, uh, the lead for Screen and Broadcasting. I uh, understand that the Cabinet Secretary um, would like to make a short opening statement. Yes, uh, it will be short. Uh, I'm very pleased to uh, be invited to discuss the work that we're doing to enable Scotland's screen sector to grasp all the opportunities before us. Uh, the Scottish Government agrees with the committee about the enormous opportunity of screen, both in film and television. Uh, we've already seen the results of our greatly increased focus on screen and record production, spend and significant new interest in Scotland, both from industry and tourists coming to visit the locations and explore the stories that they've seen on our screens. Uh, funding for this sector is uh, already providing a really positive effect uh, with the 3.7 million pounds uh, now already allocated by the production growth fund expected to deliver a spend in Scotland of around 60 million pounds. Uh, support is growing in many different ways including of course with the National Film and Television School choosing to set up in Glasgow their first base outside the southeast of England and of course it's fantastic news that Channel 4 announced yesterday that Glasgow is being shortlisted for its new national headquarters and that's an endorsement of the city's vibrant production community and innovative creative industries. And there are enormous opportunities from international platforms and studios hungry for content and from public service broadcasters who are increasingly looking to expand commissioning from the nations. And that's why the Scottish Government has responded to the screen sector's ask and backed our film and television industry by doubling funding this year with an additional £10 million in production, development and growth funding. Now that means there will be screen funding this year of more than £20 million compared to just over £3 million government funding for Screen in Creative Scotland in the financial year 2007-8. And in addition to funding through Creative Scotland, the Scottish Government also invests £12.8 million directly in MG Alba, which in large part goes straight into our production industry. So that's around £33 million uh, of screen funding this year altogether. Uh, we believe there must be a dedicated screen unit, and uh, this is the, is the single front door for supporting film and television. And I agree that the screen unit must have current expertise from industry. Uh, that's why we're recruiting people with screen expertise to the Creative Scotland board, and why Creative Scotland are doing the same, bringing in further industry expertise at every level of the screen unit. I agree that the unit must be able to take fast and effective decisions. The new executive director will have the authority and freedom to do so. The screen committee is an advisory body on screen unit strategy to the board. Uh, rightly, the largest decisions, for instance, decisions worth more than uh, £500,000 for a single production, will still go to the Creative Scotland board. But remember, with its new membership, it will include members with screen experience and will be advised by a committee with further industry experts. With plans well underway for new content development to be launched shortly, we'll also see television get the support it has been asking for. And with the recently renewed Production Growth Fund offering £2 million this year and the new skills survey uh, that reports soon, I'm confident that the services the screen unit will deliver should increasingly meet the needs of productions for funding and training. So the screen unit is getting the attention it requires and the groundwork that you've been asking for for a long time is now happening. So to recap Cap. There will be an industry expertise at every level of the Screen Unit and Creative Scotland Board. The unit will be decisive and empowered. With more staff, it will be able to deliver a more complete service in areas where there have been gaps. Uh, it will be backed by more funding. Uh, we in government have provided that extra £10 million for Screen and other agencies are also offering support. Uh, support will be available in new areas, crucially in content development for television. There will be a skills uh, strategy based on evidence with the first comprehensive workforce survey in Scotland since 2015 and the first freelance survey since 1992 being carried out now. We're starting to address the gaps employers have pointed out, for instance, with the first courses from the National Film and Television School Scotland up and running. And in terms of company development, the pilot uh, project focus to help develop 
television production companies is underway and we expect the single front door web portal to be available from August. So in terms of infrastructure, the Pentland Studio project has been granted planning permission and Creative Scotland is preparing a business case for a studio that will explore all current uh, alternatives. And War Park Studio has developed into a great facility where the highly successful Outlander um, programme has been filming and is now into its fourth series. So it's only fair that now delivery is underway and a new executive director is being appointed that they be given the space to demonstrate what they can do. And, and there has been progress. Production spend for 2016 reached £69.4 million, which is three times what it was in 2007, when it was £23 million. Uh, pounds. I expect a uh, pace of progress uh, to pick up sharply in the next 12 months as exciting new developments have an impact. So we will have a new BBC channel and higher network spend. Channel 4 will be spending more in the nations and regions and making a decision about where its new hubs and national headquarters will be based. And the effects of increased public sector spend on development, productions and business growth as well as on the skills will start to bear fruit. So it's important that we let the screen unit establish itself and get on with the delivery, uh, delivering for the screen industry. Finally, I, I would like to thank the Scottish Screen Leadership Group, the industry and all the public agencies and indeed this and previous committees um, for their interest and support in looking at developing the screen uh, sector. Uh, I'm, I am excited about the future for screen in Scotland and thank you again for the committee for their interest in this very important sector for Scotland. Okay. Thank you very much, Cabinet Secretary. Um, the Scottish Government hasn't yet responded to the Committee's interim report calling for a standalone screen agency, and I wondered if you would like to take the opportunity to comment on that now. Uh, well, I share the committee's uh, appreciation of the opportunities and the potential and the growth, as I've just mentioned, in terms of the demand for screen production to be produced in Scotland and the opportunities for us to achieve more than we have been to date. I think that's, that's absolutely crucial. Um, I suppose, in a sense, uh, I was a bit surprised there was an interim report rather than a final report, and my genuine concern, I don't think it's the intention of the committee, but my genuine concern is that there shouldn't be any, you know, either disruption or delay um, or derailing. And because your report appeared right in the middle of our recruitment process, um, I think that is of some concern. Now, I hope that the committee in its final report gives um, support to the activities of the screen unit and to the new director which will be appointed. And I think it's really important that the, everybody gets behind the screen unit and its activity. In terms of the uh, suggestions of a separate screen unit. Um, that's something that obviously you have had some evidence of. I'm sure you'll, 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 you'll give a detail of that in your final report. But by and large, what I know from, the, from my discussions um, and the government's discussions with this, the, uh, the, the sector itself, they really want us to get on with this and to make sure the screen unit can be established. What happens at some point in the future? Well, let's let let's get it established and let's make sure that it can be uh, it can be focused on getting on with its work and not focused on something else like establishing a new unit. I would say that it takes several years to establish new agencies. Um, there's been criticisms, probably by everybody um, in the Parliament at some point, about additional quangles or additional uh, public bodies. Um, it would require legislation. Um, and it would require funding. And I think one of the concerns about a standalone agency is the funding that would be required to set it up, which could run into millions. That's happened in other, in, in other areas, in time frame and also in legislation. That's all time and effort that is not being used on directly supporting the industry itself. And I think if there's money available, it should go straight into the, the film industry. So I, if you appreciate that that's, I think, are genuine concerns. Uh, and I think they're facts that probably your, I think your interim report acknowledge the need for legislation, etc. So that's my, you know, my response. But I, obviously, you know, things can evolve. But I do think we need to give, as I said, the space for the screen unit to establish itself. And particularly when we're in the middle of our recruitment round, I think that's very important that the committee is, you know, sensitive um, to, to that position. Our report acknowledged that the work on the screen unit was underway and that we didn't want to slow things down, but that plans should be developed for it to be transformed, not for a new agency, but for it to, to be transformed into a standalone agency, which every other country in the world uh, has. Uh, the screen sector leadership group, which, which you praised in your opening uh, statement, uh, 
one of its main concerns was the fragmentation in terms of the public sector uh, bodies involved in delivering for screen. Uh, and one of the reasons we brought out our interim report was that we didn't feel that that fragmentation was being addressed uh, in the way that the governance arrangements for the screen unit were being set up. Now, we've heard this morning um, that there we were previously told by Creative Scotland that it was going to be a memorandum of understanding between these public agencies in their evidence to us this morning. Uh, they told us that there's no longer going to be a, a memorandum of understanding between these public bodies. Uh, and clearly, the response to our interim report indicates that this fragmentation is something that people in the industry are really concerned about, and they don't feel that the unit is addressing it. You can't, you can't judge the unit because it's not been established. I think that's the, the danger of, of trying to assess something before it's actually been established. The uh, screen unit collaboration report that was sent to, to yourselves on the, on the 8th of December, uh, it was published on the 11th of December, you know, set out what I thought was a clear partnership agreement between all the different agencies. So, uh, can I say, I heard the other, earlier evidence session and I absolutely agree with Barclay Price that a, a business plan with actions, an annual report is far stronger than an MOU. An MOU may have been uh, appropriate at some point much earlier in the, in the process. That's why it will have been indicated to you that an MOU was being prepared. But I think in terms of the committee you've got, that committee is as much about, and I think this is a really important point, uh, making sure that the uh, that activity that will still take place within Skills Development Scotland, particularly on the skills side, or the Funding Council for the funding of media and film and all the rest of, of the screen sector support areas within our university and colleges, that that is done in a coordinated way that makes sense, that is advised by the industry, which is why you're going to have three, you've already got uh, Gillian Strachan, uh, sorry, Gillian Berry, David Strachan and John McCormack on the, the screen committee. But that committee itself is about mobilising and making sure that anything else that's happening will, will be coordinated uh, and in terms of, of the activity. But the bulk of the spend and the spend decisions on film will be taken by the yet to be appointed uh, executive director uh, for screen who will, who will be uh, empowered to make those decisions, particularly I think which is very important in terms of that speed of reaction for when productions want to make a decision and to make sure that that can happen. But I think in terms of the business plan that will be, be set out with the, uh, with the annual reporting, I think that's far, far stronger than a memorandum of understanding to do something at some point in the future. A business plan means this is what we're delivering, this is how we're going to do it, this is how we're going to resource it. And also for a Accountability, which I think is important to certainly for myself as government, but also yourselves as the parliamentary committee, the, the annual reporting will be a very powerful way to see uh, the activity that's been generated by everybody working together for film. And as I was pointed out in your earlier evidence session, that would happen regardless of whether the screen unit is part of Creative Scotland or whether it was a standalone unit. That would still be required. That may well be the case, but I think you know, like you can understand that the committee may be slightly uh, perplexed that you take evidence from Creative Scotland, you know, a few weeks ago, and they argue about a memorandum of understanding, and suddenly the the plan changes. Um, it doesn't kind of build confidence that they're quite focused well, on, on on the delivery of this thing. But I think with the greatest respect, I think that's because you are, I mean, even the evidence day, you know, session, you've got interviews taking place, you've got meetings with the BBC yesterday, you've got, this is a very active period for the, in the development of the screen unit. So it's kind of, I, I suspect, if you're taking evidence in, in mid-process, then you are going to get changes in development. But I think we're in a stronger position now uh, with the, the proposition of a business plan, and that, I think, will be, be very effective in accountability yeah. as well. There's also the issue of delivery. You know, we were originally told it would be delivered last December, and we're still waiting for it. No. And we, so we, you, um. If you heard the earlier evidence session, there weren't many... Uh, definite timelines. Yeah. So in terms of, I know when I, I gave evidence to you, we were expecting the uh, blueprint uh, late autumn. Uh, it was eventually uh, sent to the committee and uh, agreed in, uh, uh, well, it was November, I sent it to you in, in December. Uh, in relation to uh, the recruitment process, I share frustrations. I expected 
uh, Greater Scotland to embark on the recruitment pro process earlier than they did. Uh, but in terms of the development, we are moving at pace now. You can see that in the activity that was reported to you today. Um, and I really want the uh, Sun Ute to be given the, the best and the fairest wind. And I think that's responsibility not just of government, but also of parliament, to make sure that you know the, the, the recruitment of all these additional members of staff, uh, to make sure the Screen Unit is up and running, it has the support um, of Scotland. Uh, and I think the, the issue of doing interim reports and doing inquiries during processes means that you're not going to get a complete picture until the unit's uh, finally established. So I did tell the committee, I wrote to the committee to say that it was expected that by the end of the financial year as opposed to the, the calendar year uh, that the unit be, would be established. That hasn't been the case because of the delay in the recruitment, but as if you've heard from the evidence today, there's been active interest, uh, 40 uh, applications, strong applications to the position of the executive director, um, and those uh, interview, the shortlisting and the, the interviewing is, is, is happening as of now, as is, and importantly, um, the appointment of uh, up to three, uh, possibly three members of Creative Scotland with screen industry, certainly two. Now, uh, again, I mean, I answered a question, I think, from Claire Baker um, on the 25th of April when I said that those recru that recruitment was taking place. The adverts for the Creative Scot uh, Scotland board membership um, was all you know, was published uh, again with the reference and the importance that is actually a screen input that we were looking for and everybody that's applied has got that screen uh, background and that's very important. That was all published before your interim report. So, you know, again, it was you know, the criticism you had in your interim report was outdated by the time the interim report was published by statements that I'd made, I'd made publicly as well uh, in the chamber. So I think that's the issue. This is a, yes, it's evolving, but it's developing for a good reason. And that's why everybody has to get behind the screen unit to, to enable it to succeed. I now pass over to Claire Baker. Um, thank you, convener. Um, in the question in the chamber that the Cabinet Secretary refers to, I asked about governance arrangements. Uh, the committee still has... One of the issues that prompted our interim report was concerns about the governance arrangements. And I think you said in the opening statement that if a decision is worth more than 500,000, it would then have to be approved by the board, by Create Scotland Board. Um, we do have concerns that there's an issue with the ability of the what's the official title, the executive director, to have flexibility in decision-making and have autonomy in decision-making. When you're dealing... I mean, half a million is a lot of money, but we are dealing with a global industry where a lot of money is a common factor. And, and if we're looking to grow the sector in Scotland to be able to compete internationally, that sum of money is not, is not unusual. So in terms of decision making, I have, you made clear that we expect there to be um, authority and uh, accountability that the, the executive director can make those decisions. That's, that's normal. It's not unusual uh, for public agencies for investments of that sum, as, in, you know, as with other boards, perhaps indeed in uh, Scottish Enterprise, that that seeks board approval. That doesn't necessarily, that can be done by correspondence, it can be done swiftly. Remember, the board can be advised by, they've got expertise that they can, they can draw on. The recommendations will come from the executive director. That's not unusual uh, for sums of that amount to be uh, uh, to have board clearance, uh, bearing in mind that uh, by the time that any any amounts like this would be uh, subject to decision making, you know you're going to have on the board you're going to have uh, two, uh, certainly two, possibly three of the then eleven members will have screen uh, screen expertise, and critically, if they want to draw advice from the committee, they've got advice there. Remember, the committee is advisory, and um, the screen committee is advisory. We heard this morning that the executive director's title is actually of screen and creative enterprise and we were unaware that that role had been a broader remit than what we expected and concerns have been expressed that it's diluting the importance of screen and we did hear evidence from Create Scotland this morning that denied that or that gave a, an answer to why they think that's appropriate, but do you have any views on... Well, we've made it quite clear that we expect the Executive Director to focus and most certainly in the early uh, period of the screen unit, absolutely on screen. That is the focus and that has to be the focus of the Executive Director. And in terms of the recruitment, that also has been uh, the emphasis that has been put on in relation to uh, what we expect in terms of the applications and those that will be approved. Um, can I ask now briefly about... Um studios and mm -hmm. about the infrastructure for Scotland. Um, in May 2013, as Cabinet Secretary, you said that we were in active discussions with a range of organisations 
which we hoped would give positive news at some point in the future. So that was 2013. Yeah. And then we had other statements in 2015 saying that we're in discussions for studio space. And I think most recently in 2016, um, we still haven't had any studio capacity increase in Scotland that's come from the Scottish Government. While we've had Ward, Ward Park and we've got Pentlands uh, pro progressing through its stages, we haven't had the investment from Scotland. And evidence we've taken, it was an issue in the last committee inquiry that the Economy Committee did. Um, it's still an issue ongoing. We've heard examples in Manchester and Belfast and Cardiff about public authorities being able to take a lead in developing studio space. So what's been issues in Scotland that's prevented us from making that type of progress? Uh, a couple of things. It's quite clear from the uh, other investments that have taken place that the, 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 uh, they have been using public assets in terms of empty spaces. You look at Belfast, you look at um, other areas in terms of development. For example, um, in Wales, uh, there was a former uh, energy centre that was owned, already owned by the Welsh Government. So to make it clear, uh, in terms of the state aid requirements, this has to be private sector led. So your question to me was, the Scottish Government hasn't done this. Well, the Scottish Government and it cannot itself purchase. It a seems studio, like Manchester City Council did. I don't know. Well, that. there may be issues, and this is the issues. You know, the state aid is, is a very serious uh, issue indeed. And you recall, because you are familiar with the, the previous committee inquiry, the Valencia case in 2012, a two hundred and sixty-five million pound uh, euros, sorry, two hundred and sixty-five euros investment, uh, again was con con you know contravened straight aid, and that had to be uh, repaid. So, in terms of the kind of the, the challenges that are there now in relation to, again, Manchester or other areas, you've got pi private sector developers, you've got public assets and private sector developers, and, and it's reliant on private sector developers, one being interested and wanting to take forward those, those uh, developments. But there are issues as to what has been spent by the public as opposed to what's been spent uh, or what has been invested by the private. So you can't do something that is in, in terms of competition with the private sector by uh, the investment from the public sector. So that's like, I've been a critical factor. Now, it's not that we haven't had studio space and we've seen the production and activity, whether it's in uh, Ward Park, whether it's uh, been in, in relation to the pyramids, where it's in relation to um, other, uh, other filming studios I've personally visited in terms of Churchill, for example, and Livingston, or other places that have uh, you know, been used for filming. But we absolutely need a film studio, and not just one. So that's my, my, my point. Um, in terms of Pentlands, uh, the Pentlands proposal, you've heard evidence directly from them and their activity. And we're also still, as I speak, actively involved. And we have never stopped being actively involved in trying to identify activity in terms of a, a film studio. Our real concern, and maybe it's a compliment in the sense that we've used our public assets, there, there hasn't been a public space in terms of a building or anything else that's been owned by the public sector that we've been able to then use uh, in relation to setting up or helping then to get a private developer to become involved uh, in order to, to take that forward compared to other places. It's extremely frustrating. But I am hopeful. Um, and I know you've heard that before, but I am hopeful uh, we've got developments and there are a number of, uh, a number of areas where you're seeing that uh, development of studio space. As I said, the Pentland Proposal, Ward Park, there are, um, are others you may have been familiar with and others I, I know are active, but I can't necessarily give detail of at this stage. We'll have to move on in order to get other members in. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Richard Lockhead, followed by Tavi Scott. Thanks. I should say, of course, there's lots of state-owned uh, big empty spaces in my constituency if you're looking for a state-owned empty space for a studio. <laughs> Uh, uh, the former ARF can law space comes to mind, for instance. Uh, but in terms of the future of the film industry and screen sector in Scotland, we are now in the 19th year of devolution, and there's a sense that we've, not, we've never quite put in place the measures to capture the massive opportunity of, of film and screen. And of course, now in this year and in subsequent years, the opportunity is bigger than ever with the changing uh, landscape. Uh, the government has prioritised, you know, life sciences, food and drink, tourism, renewables and some other sectors, but never quite done that with film and screen. And as I say, now there's real, a real chance to do that. Uh, and the stars do appear to be aligning with some of the measures you've outlined in your opening remarks, which is great news. But the committee's view is that whilst things are a lot better and looking a lot more optimistic, we don't want just to be better, we want to be the best. And that's why the committee has proposed a standalone uh, film agency for Scotland. And given the government has a lot of experience of changing the status of agencies over the last few years, surely we can find a way to establish a standalone film agency for Scotland that avoids the disruption you seem to be pointing out, because there does seem to be 
institutional resistance to a standalone film agency for Scotland. We've just heard the, the same arguments from Creative Scotland. So can we not just go on with it and find a way of moving forward and doing what's best? Because this is a huge economic opportunity mm -hmm. and one of the potentially biggest growth sectors for Scotland in the next few years. But again, the feedback I've had is don't delay doing what you're doing. You know, make sure that the screen unit can be established and there's nothing said or done that disrupts that in the process of setting setting that up. And in relation to um, the uh, the point about setting up new agencies, you know, Rich and I, you know, we were colleagues from, from uh, previous uh, go governments and cabinets and it still is the government's view that we should not be establishing new agencies unless, for example, like Social Security or revenue, there's a real um, demand for new powers that we need, need to do that. And there is a kind of point about that spend and money and legislation and the you know, legislation and the changes and uh, to, to, you know, to develop uh, Creative Scotland uh, were actually started by the previous government, which I think Tavish Scott was a member of at, at one point in relation to the development of bringing together what was then a separate unit, which remember only spent £3 million in terms of the amount of money it had to spend. Um, and that, again, involved legislation, and I'm not sure that that would be the most effective um, use of public resources and public money to spend it on establishing HR, finance, sorting out pensions, um, all the different things you have to do to establish the agency. It's actually the funding activity that, that matters. So I'm, I'm asking the um, committee to give the screen unit a chance and to make sure that it's unencumbered in trying to establish what it's doing uh, by thinking about other issues that are more to do with organisation and the bureaucracy rather than delivering for film because that actually is what I think is really important at the end of the day is what we deliver for film. Yeah. Uh, as the Scottish Government's repeated uh, many, many times, we do face quite a bleak post-Brexit world and we're looking for wins and economic successes. Therefore, we should perhaps grasp opportunities that are, are laid before us and I would argue that film and screen is one of the big opportunities for Scotland of the, of the 21st century. Therefore, in terms of our, uh, the Scottish Government's policy of not creating new agencies, uh, there have been some exceptions for the reasons that the Cabinet mm -hmm. Secretary has mentioned. Should we not also make this an exception? Because surely uh, giving up that principle of no new agencies is worth it in if it's getting more economic benefit for the country, uh, and given this is a massive industry we're speaking about? Well, I think the screen unit, as established, will be able to do that. It was supported by the Screen Leadership Group um, in January 2017. The Scottish, uh, the Screen Sector Leadership Group said, we strongly support the Scottish Government's proposal to establish a much-enhanced screen unit with an expanded remit to enable it to assume this critical leadership role. Um, so, you know, we've got the support of the, the industry and what, what we're doing. I think your point about the, uh, the win factor for film screen, I absolutely agree. It's why I've managed, in a very difficult budget, area when culture not ne hasn't necessarily been uh, a protected area has been set out in manifestos or other programme for government I've managed to uh, not only uh, manage to get a, a main maintenance of the, Scottish, uh, of the Creative Scotland's budget but to get an additional £10 million uh, for the screening unit that's doubling of the funding in a very tight settlement I think is quite an achievement and that puts us in a very strong comparative position in relation to investments that are made by other countries of similar size in the film industry. So that's a good and strong position to be in. In relation to key sectors, uh, creative industries is one of the Scottish Government's seven key sectors. Uh, I, I agree, I want it elevated in its importance and what it uh, what it does. We've got a Creative Industries Advisory Group established as well. Film is very much uh, you know, uh, critical to that sector. I believe it should get more profile in terms of uh, uh, its contribution. The contribution of Creative uh, Industries to Scotland's economy is more than life sciences. But uh, life sciences is obviously a key sector. People are probably more aware of it. But that's not just my role. It's the role of um, everybody, I think, in Parliament who believes in the importance of Creative Industries to make sure that there's a greater awareness of that contribution. And it's one of the fastest growing sectors across the UK. And in which, in the, and your point is that and whatever happens when the UK leaves the EU, it's absolutely critical that we're, we're focusing on the sectors that can deliver real growth. And this absolutely is one that can deliver real growth. Um, and it's also important that we get more people in, this, uh, in terms of career choices to come into this sector, because it is one that I think will be uh, delivering for Scotland uh, in the future. So um, you know, the economic importance is absolutely vital, which is why we're investing so much. Okay. My, my I'm going to have yeah. to move on, I'm afraid. Uh, Tavish Scott, followed by Ross Greer. Thank you. The business case that uh, Creative Scotland described to us earlier on was given to you in December of last year and the government approved it at that stage. 
Correct. Uh, the screen unit collaborative proposal, which was published in uh, it was a December, case. it was described earlier on as a business case. Uh, I think you've well, in terms of the uh, the business plan that was described earlier on is what will be delivered in relation to screen unit, and that will be uh, be able to have an annual report. That's going forward. Uh, what was it? What was produced in terms of uh, setting up the screen unit and how it could be set up and what it should do was informed by certainly the Scottish Screen Leadership Group, but it was uh, put together uh, and it given to the committee, I think, on the 8th yeah, of December. Yeah, I'm talking I'm asking about Ian Munro's evidence earlier on, which he said quite specifically that the government and the minister were presented with a business plan in December of last year, and that was approved at that stage. To set up the screen unit. Well, you can call it you can call it a business plan, or you can call it the screen unit it. collaborative proposal. It's the same. It's the same thing. If that's okay, what you're, if that's, well, if that's what you're to because yeah. that's what their earlier evidence okay. was. Did that business case include a recruitment timeline for the executive director? Uh, it, it it was quite clear in at uh, that time that I wanted I wanted Creative Scotland to start the recruitment process immediately, but that no. didn't happen until later. I'm sorry, that's not the question I asked. Did that business case include a recruitment timeline for the recruitment of an executive director? It was, well, I think it, it will have done, yes. It did. And uh, you don't recall wh when that recruitment was due to start in that business yeah, case? Yeah, well, I, well I, I, I can't give you a date of what it says in the, in the, in the uh, proposal, but the idea was to try and get the uh, business, the, the the unit established, the screen unit established by the end of the financial year. No, just but the recruitment said. didn't start. And I, I, I am frustrated. Yeah. I made it clear that the recruitment process for the director should have started earlier. But it has started. We're in the middle of this. Uh, and I think it's important we, they're given the space to get on with that. Yeah, no, I was just puzzled because you said earlier on you were frustrated by that. And we can yeah. understand that. But I, I'm therefore puzzled as to why it wasn't in that business plan or why it wasn't questioned at that time in December of last year. It was questioned. I, I made it clear that I expected that to, 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 to start. Right, so it wasn't a business plan. There was a clear timeline in that business plan as to when that exactly. Well, I'll, I'll, I can d double check on the actual yeah, timeline okay. in, the, in the plan, but I can tell you absolutely in, in my conversations with Creative Scotland, I was quite clear. Now, I, I would bear in mind that uh, in that process, we were still going through the budget process of the Scottish Government. The, t the additional £10 million to set up the screening hadn't been approved at that point. And indeed, there'll be members of um, this committee who voted against um, having that uh, additional funding and when they voted against the, the final budget proposal. So remember, that was a, an area that the funding hadn't absolutely been secured because of the budget process. Uh, um, can I just finish my questions, if I may? We don't have much time, and I want all members to be able to get in. Th thank you. The only other question I was going to ask was on, the on Claire Baker's question. You said on the executive director's uh, job title that it, that it would be solely... It would be solely concentrating on film, but that's not what the job title says. The job title and the responsibilities are for screen and creative uh, enterprise, but I've been quite clear uh, with Creative Scotland, and they were quite clear, I think, in their evidence, that the focus absolutely is about establishing the screen unit, so the focus will be about screen particularly. Um, but the in, job title is wider than that, Cabinet Secretary. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you accept that? Well, that's what's been established, yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ross Green. Thanks, Convener. Um, Cabinet Secretary, I'd like to revisit the, the points that were just made around state aid in relation to Claire Baker's question on studios. You said that state aid rules essentially mean that this uh, process would have to be private sector led, but that's, that's not my understanding of state aid rules. In fact, if it was private sector led and there was government funding and support for that, that would break state aid rules. But if it's entirely public sector led, and as long as the eventual entity meets the market operating principle, as long as it can compete fairly in the market, then that would comply with the rules. Is that the Scottish Government's understanding of well, state aid? We've, we've tasted, you know, part of the testing that we've had, and we've, that, that goes back to 2014, probably before um, you were elected to this place, mm -hmm. in terms of our scrutiny of this, it has been uh, exactly on the basis that you were, would, was this unfairly competing? Was, if there was market failure, now I would argue over that period, it's quite clear that mm -hmm. you know, we haven't had that permanent studio that we've been requiring, but at every step of the way, uh, when there have been uh, any proposals put forward, they've been tested on the basis of does it meet market failure and does it comply with the, the state aid provision and any you know, any proposals that have been brought to us um, the view has been and the advice we've been given the professional advice we've been given is that it would leave us open um, to, to challenge and it's got to operate on commercial terms that's that's the, the critical part of this yeah. we've taken some evidence around uh, Manchester I'm sure you're very familiar with the, the situation there through the, the council and the rallies and, and what they've managed to achieve has there been any 
communication between Scottish government officials and those in Manchester, because they've gone through, I think, three phases of this development. Now, as a city council, they would be far more at risk from any uh, successful legal challenge uh, against them. They've obviously thoroughly risk assessed that process at each stage and came to the conclusion that they were on solid mm -hmm. ground and they met state aid rules. Has there been any communication? Uh, so part of our ongoing assessment is we constantly are looking at uh, the different different sectors of different parts of the country, what they are doing to do a compare contrast to see what they're doing, to see if there's anything we can learn from that. Manchester in particular, we, we understand, use more loan financing as well. So loan financing can be a different bit. Again, people have to then be able to be prepared to take the commercial risk. It is a commercial risk that the loan uh, aspects will be repaid. Uh, and none of the proposals that we've had to date in Scotland would have necessarily been in the loan aspect, but that's another area we can look at. And that's perhaps why... Uh, they think, and again, I can't make a judgment on this, that theirs is more compliant. And just one brief question around, um, going back again to another of Claire Baker's questions around governance. The concern that has come up repeatedly is that this is not, uh, what we're going to end up with is not screen sector led, that uh, governance at the screen unit level is dominated by public agencies, some of which there is long running frustration with, and then the ultimate level of governance before it reaches yourself as a cabinet secretary is through Creative Scotland, whose board, even with additional screen sector experience, is never going to be a majority screen sector experience. So at one level, we've got governance dominated by public agencies, many of whom elicit a lot of frustration. At another level, governance dominated by those without screen sector experience. Is the sector, is the industry actually involved enough in driving this process and will it be? Because the governance arrangements don't seem to make that case. Okay, well the governance arrangements are, uh, as I've set out, the uh, board of Creative Scotland will have uh, two, uh, possibly three members, new members, that will have screen experience in the recruitment process for that. The, the advertisement went out on the 20. Uh, uh, the 27th of April, that's now closed and we're in the process of, uh, of uh, recruiting and appointing those positions. But let, let's be clear about the, the governance. And again, it goes back to the document that was sent to the committee on the 8th of December, the uh, Screen Unit Collaborative Proposal, I think referred to um, there as a, a business plan. And it, it sets out what the, enhanced, the role of the Enhanced Screen Committee will be. And it is to do the following advise, I remember I said it's an advisory committee, advise on screen unit strategy and report on its performance. So that's after the effect to make sure that in terms of um, the advice going in, but also performance. Agree, scrutinise and monitor management plans and oversee the effectiveness of partnership working to make sure that all the partners are working collectively. That's a uh, high Scottish uh, enterprise, as I mentioned, the funding council, because a lot of the film courses and all the rest of it are financed. Um, and over, so that's it. It's not about. It's not a governance. It's not governance as in terms of decision making. It's not a decision making committee. It's an advisory committee. And I think that might clear up some of the points of the concern that the committee has had. That they've thought it's an additional layer of governance and decision making. It's not. Uh, does it, major funding decisions would have to go straight to. The, you would go to the board. Um, and, and again, that, that would have an enhanced screen experience. They've also got the industry, and I've talked about the members are on the, 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 the screen committee that can advise the board as to whether this makes sense in terms of the, the proposal, if it's over a half a million for, of public funding, um, that this is a, appropriate. And again, swift decision-making can take place, as it always does, and it does currently amongst board members for large public sector uh, funding uh, Does decisions. that not go to the, the core of, of the issue, though, that ultimately that the largest, the most significant decisions yeah. will go to a board that is not driven by those with screen sector experience? Exactly. Well, I think three out of 11 is a strong position. I don't think the board would take a decision um, that was against the advice from the executive director or uh, as supported by a screen committee. This committee has a lot of recent experience with the decisions of the Creative Scotland board and frustration with them in, in other areas. I, there is a real concern within the screen sector that this is a board that, for all positive intentions, no one doubts the positive intentions, simply does not have the required experience to drive these kind of decisions. The vast majority of decisions about screen investment will be made by the executive director themselves. But they will ultimately be accountable to the board, and the board will make the most significant decisions. Well, the, under the advisement and under the advisement and request under the advisement from. 
the uh, executive director who will come from the screen industry and be an expert themselves and advice is available from the uh, the screen committee that does have not only um, three current as you're aware three current uh, screen members, but we'll also have the additional three board members. I mean, this is this is, you know, in terms of making sure that the decision making process can take place uh, swiftly. Uh, you've got the empowerment of the executive director for the vast majority of the decisions for those few decisions that will be a major. This is not unusual. There'll be there'll be other public boards will be making decisions, uh, and but they, they they will draw on expert advice. That's that's the that's the that's what's available to the board and we've managed to make sure there's an you know, you've got the industry uh, leading industry members that can help them with that decision making in, in terms of their advice but that happens in other sectors you're not going to have say in life sciences or other areas um, you know you're not going to say there's a decision a major investment inward investment decision for life sciences for manufacturing would go to a board where you've got expecting every single member of that Scottish enterprise board to be a life sciences expert it's not in the same you know you've got to think about it in, in, in those terms but you know can I say in terms of the amount of decisions and they have made decisions already the major investment for Netflix for Outlaw King that has uh, again uh, supported not only uh, jobs training all, all the rest of it in terms of the spend in Scotland but also helped develop very importantly and it goes back to the committee's own uh, uh, evidence as well about the importance of Netflix and others in terms of streaming in terms of spend develop the relationship with them. that decision that decision was already made by uh, I, I don't Scotland. think the suggestions that... We have to move on to the next member. I'm sorry, otherwise we won't get everyone in. Jamie Green. <laughs> Thank you, convener. Good morning, panel. Um, Cabinet Secretary, is it your understanding that despite the recommendations of the committee, which were very clear, Scotland will not get a standalone screen agency, that you have no plans to set one up, and that the new screen unit will actually be led by an executive director who's not focusing solely on screen? The executive director will focus on screen in the initial stages. You heard that not from me, just from me, but also from um, the previous evidence session. Um, and in relation to uh, ensuring that we've got uh, effective screen unit, uh, what we cannot afford, and what I really have got concerns, is don't try and delay this. I think that's the, the the real concern that I would have, and that's been relayed to me as well. That you know, the, any attempt by the committee to try and delay things would actually be would be problematic. Now, if what, what happens at some point in the future, whether it becomes a standalone agency, I'm not saying no, never. I'm just saying not now, <laughs> and I think that's really important to, to give a signal that we're getting behind the screen unit. Um, I think it's it's uh, I, th I think it's not unreasonable. Not all countries have screen separate screen agencies. Um, we want to make sure that the screen unit can have that swift uh, swiftness of foot, the resources, the funding. It's going to be in a well established place. But if at some point in the future, and I, I'm not saying that I'm, uh, I'm just not implement. I'm not going to implement as of tomorrow. Uh, I, I move to set up a separate screening you know, unit, we're in absolutely live process of recruiting people as we speak. And I think that would be a very unusual uh, position for, for any organisation, let alone government, to take, is to change path in the middle of a recruitment process. Uh, with the greatest respect, though, the previous uh, panel uh, did say that there would be a wider remit than just screen. The, the term creative enterprise, I mean, I, I don't know what that means. Uh, what other activities, tasks, duties will this executive director have? that are not focused solely, and it is the word solely that's important here, solely on screen. This is the only agency that we will have in Scotland. Uh, so it's imperative that that executive director is focused solely on screen. Well, I'm, I'm supportive of that position. I think it's a, an important position that the executive director can focus on screen. I'd prefer it solely on screen, but I think in terms of uh, the commercialisation aspects that were referred to both by Barclay and Ian, I think that's an, a, an important area that they'll be able to bring to a wider understanding and application. But I do think the main focus has to be on screen, and that has been my message to Creative Scotland. I am not establishing the position. The position is being established uh, by Creative Scotland, but I think they might take the committee's <coughs> views on this and also uh, my... Uh, I haven't directed them on this, uh, but I have uh, urge them, remember they are a non-departmental public body, but I've urged them to focus on the screen sector as the priority. And just as a final point, and it's more of an observation, I'm obviously new to the committee, but I find it very disappointing that the Cabinet Secretary is implying that the committee, with its collective goodwill and cross-party uh, views, is somehow trying to impede the development of this, the screen sector in Scotland. Mm -hmm. I find that a bizarre stance to take. Well, 
I can I say it's, it's quite an unusual position to, to establish an interim report. I, I take the goodwill of the committee and it would be great if your final report would reflect that your support for the screen unit and what it's trying to achieve. I think that's a very important signal. So uh, in terms of where I am, I want to make sure the screen unit is established. I, I do hope the committee can get behind it, but of course you've yet to publish your, your final report. Your initial your interim report was, was critical rather than necessarily as supportive as, as I might have liked, but then you know, the committee is independent, they can make their own decisions about what they want to Correct. do, and I think it's really Absolutely. important that the expression of that uh, is one that I think is supportive of the sector, and as, as Rich Locke had said, this has got fantastic, enormous potential, uh, but what I think you do find in, in other countries is that uh, support from all all parties, uh, parliament and government, and I think it's something that we should all get behind, uh, in, and I encourage the committee to do so. It's hard to take that necessarily from the interim report and the timing of it. Um, that might, perhaps might be more appropriate for a final report, but that's up to the committee. You can make your own decisions. As I'm not quite sure what the point of the intervention was at this stage, when you obviously, do, if you don't want to disrupt the process of it. I'm not sure why it couldn't have waited until your final report, but that's a judgment call for the committee and that's up to you to, to make that decision. Alexander Stewart. Uh, thank you, uh, Cabinet Secretary. I'm, I'm relatively new to the committee as well, but I, I find it interesting that you are critical of the committee and its stance, uh, uh, because at the end of the day, what I can see from this process is that we are trying to, or have been trying to identify uh, the best way to go forward. Uh, and we should all be trying to sing from the same hymn sheet uh, and, and not create some kind of divide uh, that we already seem to be having. But my, my question would be, you know, we've talked today about it being a, a key sector uh, and the skills that are required and the opportunities that are there. Uh, uh, can I ask about the, the role that, that Scottish Enterprise have in this whole process? Uh, are you content, as the Cabinet Secretary, that the skill base, the knowledge, the understanding that they have is sufficient to lead everything going forward? forward. Well, the leadership will come from the screen unit and the executive director, but what we do want to do is to make sure that those functions that will still remain, this is not an excuse for other agencies not to support the screen sector, and that's really important, mm -hmm. that the leadership will come from the screen unit, um, the spend is there for the screen unit to, to exercise, but those uh, those activities, whether it's on uh, business development aspects mm -hmm. for Scottish Enterprise, or indeed, as I talked about, film media courses from Funding Council, um, those activities um, are going to be very important to continue and there has been successes from that you've seen the kind of and i visited blazing griffin a very good example of good strong scottish enterprise support for um, a developing area and um, uh, access animation different areas particularly in screen digital and we haven't really touched much on screen and digital but those aspects of where uh, scottish uh, enterprise can provide additional resource and funding I need to continue that, yeah. I mean, you, you've identified there the broadth and the depth that, that, that falls into the screen sector. Uh, uh, and it, it's important that we capture all of that, uh, that we're not just specialising on some areas initially. We need to ensure that we broaden the net as wide as we can to ensure that we get the best possible uh, uh, opportunities for individuals and organisations to come. Because we do believe uh, that, they, that they will do that. And by, by us giving that confidence and by you giving that confidence, that will happen. But... I get the feeling that we're not right spreading the, wet, the net wide enough in this whole process. I'm not quite sure. We're spreading the net wide enough in To make way. sure that all parts of, of the sector that, that can fall into the screen sector are actually being well, identified a, and getting yeah. the opportunity to develop. And that's exactly why the screen committee, a lot of its focus is, is, is you know, about mobilising all the resources that we have across Scotland advised by screen experts, the three uh, board members plus the three industry uh, sector representatives, and that enables the wider activity that can be mobilised to be brought behind. But can I say, it is about confidence. Yeah. We've got to be confident, so that's why uh, I don't want to be overly critical, and I'm not, I'm just a bit concerned that we've got to make sure that we're facing the opportunities of the screen unit with confidence. Uh, uh, questioning is good, that's the responsibility mm -hmm. of the committee, absolutely. But confidence is going to be very important and anything that dents that I think would be problematic for us and I, that's why I think I, you know, in terms of mobilising everybody's support, both the agencies, parliament, the committee and government, that's going to be critical in making sure that we can really make sure that Scotland finally, and I know frustrations, and I know you're new to the committee but there are older members of the committee that, sure. and previous committees that know where we've been, we really finally have the platform that we can make a difference and I think everybody needs to get behind that. Thank you. Camille. Stuart McMillan. Thank you. Um, the Cabinet Secretary, a few moments ago that uh, you said uh, in response to a colleague that uh, you wouldn't rule out a standing loan agency at some point uh, in the future. 
Uh, and I absolutely accept your point regarding confidence uh, and moving forward with the proposal uh, that uh, that's on the table. Um, so, and with that in mind, what, uh, well, how will the Scottish Government actually measure uh, the success of this screen unit going forward? Well, in terms of the, again, going back to the uh, screen unit collaborative proposal, there was quite clear, quite ambitious targets of what we want to, to achieve, and that was set out in that proposal in terms of uh, you know, increasing the numbers of uh, major companies that were involved in investment, in terms of the spend that we have. Again, in terms of the business plan, the, the, the actions that are from that, we'll have an annual plan. Again, we can have accounting on that. Um, so I think the ambitions that are set out in the screen unit collaborative proposal sent to the committee in December set out what our expectations are, and we can measure against that. Again, if that's something in your final report you want to advise what you we can consider uh, as being uh, elements of success that'd be that'd be very helpful for you to contribute that to to that but we've already been very clear and very ambitious informed by the screen leadership group themselves as to what their expectations would be and what's embraced within the screen unit collaborative proposal given to the committee in december supported by the screen leadership group is what we want to measure against uh, but I, I you know I'm, I'm very optimistic that of what we can achieve and we've already seen in relation to that additional spend that uh, I've managed to secure in, into the production growth fund, already £3.7 million, has leveraged in and supported another £60 million of investment. So that's a strong position to be in. Uh, I mean, would you certainly would you anticipate that uh, that uh, level of investment uh, and uh, the level of uh, growth from that uh, will continue in the uh, certainly over the course of the next two years. I know the plan is certainly for five years, but would you anticipate to see uh, continued growth over the course of the next two years? Um, well, support from the committee in terms of investment into stream would be helpful when we come to our, our, our budget considerations, but we, we are serious about this and we want this to be a success as a government, and so therefore we want to continue our investment in screen. Uh, and in terms of the levels that we've managed to achieve, that is very competitive indeed. We're in a that's in a strong position. Uh, in terms of do we expect continued growth, I think somebody else made the comment that you know, the, 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 the expectations will be in terms of the market development, there should be growth of demand. Uh, certainly the tax breaks from the UK government have been uh, instrumental in making us more attractive. Uh, who knows where the financial situation of the UK government can be? I can't predict that, but I, what I can tell you is that um, there's been recognition of the leverage that we've managed to achieve in relation to having uh, that uh, tax breaks uh, has been, uh, been very attractive. Also, devalued pound... Um, has been helpful uh, in terms of value for what you can get. Some of these things you can control, some of the things you can't control. But we do anticipate over the next period that there will be growth um, in this sector, growth in demand, uh, both from public sector in terms of their spend in the nations and regions, not least because of this government and uh, the Parliament's uh, previous committees putting pressure um, on the public sector broadcasters as well to achieve that. So both from the private demand from, you know, whether it's the, the streaming companies, whether it's from Netflix and others, uh, but the demand certainly is there we need to make the most of that demand. But there are certain elements that, that we can control, but some of the other areas that we can't, and we'll continue to make sure that the tax breaks that we currently have uh, are continued um, and uh, enhanced, if, if, if preferable. And, uh, and this morning we heard uh, the issue regarding a, a potential uh, new studio location. Now, in going forward, <coughs> who, who would actually have the responsibility for uh, driving that, that type of inward investment? Would it be this, this new unit? Would it be Creative Scotland or would it be Scottish Enterprise? It would be the, it would be Scottish, it would be the, it would be the screen unit itself. Um, it would be supported by the board, obviously, for any major investment decisions and Scottish Enterprise can have a role as, a, a, as appropriate. Uh, but again, because they're tied in as part of the screen committee in terms of the, that collective, collaborative uh, role and in terms of the business plan that we've had, uh, they know what their responsibilities are in terms of delivering, but the, the, the driver for that will come from the screen unit. Thank you very much. Um, we're now considerably over time, so we'll have to wrap up. Um, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for coming to give evidence to us today, but can I also say that uh, I share committee members' disappointment with the criticism of our interim report. Our interim report was done after taking extensive evidence from the industry, and it has been warmly received by the industry. Uh, and we're not trying to in any way slow things down, as the interim report said, but to make sure that we get absolutely the best for the sector. Um, our intervention was because we were concerned about the direction of travel, and I think that Creative Scotland's decision uh, to uh, not appoint someone with a title 
that was solely focused on screen suggests that this committee was right mm -hmm. to uh, question the direction of travel. And I think that your evidence today reflects that your concern uh, that they have uh, the, one of the first major decisions in the screen unit is to appoint the head of the screen unit and it's not solely focused on screen. And I think that explains why we're concerned about the direction of travel and why we brought out our interim report. So I appreciate the committee's intention and I appreciate your report. OK, thank you very much. We're now moving into private session.